Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome. It is Friday night, and it is the NLG show. It's uh, Chris and I flying solo tonight. Well, we're flying, mm-hmm. du- flying duo. Uh, <laughs> flying duo, that's what we call it. Yeah. You never get over Macho Grande. <laughs> so, what's up, man? Hey, it's Friday. It's Fastback Friday. Uh, yeah, you know how to say, we got a lot of topics, so I'm going to say, hold my beer, I got this, but... I'm gonna drink my beer while we talk about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a lot to talk about. I'm so I'm sorry, uh, Peter's not here tonight. He is still on his um, he's still on his cruise. He is literally must be nice. Yeah, I know. He is literally on the seven seas. He is a legend on the out in the seas. Yes, he is actually a sea of thief right now. So, hopefully, he'll be back next week. Hopefully, the uh, hopefully his boat did not sail into the Bermuda Triangle or anything like that. <laughs> and we will have our Peter back next week. No. How are you doing? Doing good. Yeah? Long long time long no... Long week. Uh, yeah, long time no see since last night. Mm-hmm. Kicking some uh, cracked out three butt. Indeed. Repeat the game. Now, yeah, that was fun. Do we have to go back... Do we have to go back and do it on your world now? Or do I don't know. To- I'm not sure. All right, let me know. I'm not sure how I'm that up, works. I'm up for that last battle again. Yeah, that was badass. Yeah, yeah we can always do it again. I would, I would not have an issue with that. Uh-uh. <laughs> not I'm at all. Not at all. So, all right, checking good. All our audio sounds good and everything. So, uh, yeah. Other than that, though, I know it's been a busy week for me too. So, did you get a chance to to get anything else besides Crackdown? <laughs> I played uh, some Anthem today. Oh. I was playing that while I was in party chat with uh, Coop and Nate. Uh, Siberia was in there for a little bit. They were playing Sea of Thieves. And uh, so I jumped on Anthem. I mean, and I uh, I, I think Nate and Coop started playing Division 2, but I said, ah, I'm going to wait because they were like, I think, level 21 and 16. So Well, we're doing that tomorrow night, right? Yeah, yeah. And they also brought up, too, that the... Uh, Division 2 does have a problem with the scaling, so you know, really it's not good for, you know, everybody can't play together unless you're around the same level. So, they're working on yeah, they're working on that. They know there's an issue. It's the same thing. Seriously, it's the same thing that happened with it was the first one. Yeah, and the first one, Coop helped, you know, had a power level me up. And that's what we did with anybody else. Like we did that with Witty because he jumped on it later. But you have to, you know, you have to help power each other up so you can, you know, go run around together. You do. Yeah. It was the only part of Division One that wasn't fun. It's the only part I didn't enjoy was having to wait to to level up, you know, before I could really feel like I was effective in, you know, at least contributing to the bottom line. Because I know I'm not the best. I'm not the best player. I'm not the best gunner. You know, I, I know that there are people that play better than me. But when you're when you're so far behind in level that um, you a everything you do is bullet spongy to the to the enemy, and then if they hit you once, you're out. Yeah. I, I just it 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 just stops feeling fun. You know? Yeah, and the Koopas also saying that when you team up, of course, you're going to have more enemies coming at you you know because uh, you know they, they're gonna they're gonna scale the enemies up uh, you know when you have a bigger group so right. I can imagine when the uh, you know they have it they're gonna have the uh, eight eight player uh, raids or whatever they're called right and I can imagine how tough that's gonna be yeah you're probably gonna need eight people to survive that well <laughs> now that I'm clear from Crackdown for at least a little bit, so there you go, Dirty J said he's gonna be listening as he as he Halo co-ops with Siberia. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Dirty J, Siberia, Stinky Corpse, Stinky Corpse. What's up, brothers? And uh, uh, oh, real quick, give a quick shout out to uh, Super Cooper. It is his birthday today. Mm, happy birthday, so, Coop. He is now older than you. What? <laughs> I think he is. We were, I was joking with him about that earlier. I think he's older than you. That would mean he'd have to have hit 46. He might be. Really? 
I had him pegged as a younger man. I really did. I had him pegged as a much younger man than that. Uh, we're all about the same age, so. We're all old school gamers who we, started off on Pong. We are. Yeah. We are. I started off. Well, I started off with a. Uh, I actually didn't have Pong. I had a TI 99 4A computer. Well, sir, we all weren't that rich. Uh, <laughs> parents weren't that rich. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, that was not exactly. I was not exactly a high powered computer. It was kind of like the, it's kind of like the Timex Sinclair. Do you remember those? Kind of, yeah. You used to get them if you went. Get... Look, if you, you used to get a free one if you went looking at a house. Mm. Uh, I was gonna say the first kind of gaming system that we kind of had was a, you know, the Plinko machines. Yes. Uh, yeah, we had one of those. My dad had I one. Had a Plinko machine. We, Konami uh, loved you. And uh, that, that was cool. We used to play around with that. I don't know what happened to it though. But I'm I'm pretty sure those things are hard to find, kind of expensive nowadays. Oh, which we had yes. kept it, you know, the old school ones. Yeah, the ones you used to see on like Price Is Right, right? Well, I don't know if I'm saying the name right because it it's kind of like a pinball machine. Oh, Pachinko. You know, like Pachinko, right? Where it's gotcha. you know, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I know what you're you talking hang about. Hang them on your wall. Yeah, if you yeah, want yeah, it, yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah. That's what that yeah, okay. All right. I know what you're talking about now. <laughs> it's like a it's it's yeah. That's what Konami does, pachinko machines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, they're big in Japan. Yeah, I think someone had told me that about that. Yeah. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh. Oh man. So, other than other than cracked out, I've honestly not played anything else. I so what's next? Have to crack them. So next is D D Division Two, Division. Yeah. but then I'm also gonna try to hit. God, there's so many games to hit. Um, I think I want to get started on Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I yeah. I just. I know. I have that in my backlog too. Yeah, my backlog is huge. I think once I do, you know, get to level thirty on Anthem, and uh, get a good. Get to a good level on Division Two, so I can run with Koopa and um, I think I'm gonna go jump on Vampire and uh, Game Pass, which we'll talk about that later. Yeah, so it's coming so, out next week. Yeah, it's actually on sale too for those of you who don't have Game Pass. So, I mm -hmm. saw a game that was on sale for five bucks, and I had to get it. Um, and it was called uh uh oh crap um. For five bucks. Oh man, what was it called? It was like uh, there was an old PC game called Descent that it was modeled after. Um, if Cooper's in the chat, he know. He would know. It's quick, quick witted. I tweeted it out the other day. I'll find it. It's fine. Um, something, something, zero. But basically, you're in tunnels, and you can go, you know, up, down, left, right. You you can mm -hmm. go, you know, X, Y, or Z access, and um, uh, and and it was it, like I said, there's an old PC game called Descent, and that was a it was an amazing game I used to play. And it was, and at the time, it was extremely unique. Um, and when I saw this, a sub sub level zero, that's what it's called, sub level zero. Game is five bucks. I had to have it, sub level zero. So, I'll I might stream that too because that's uh, that's fun. Speaking of streaming, did uh. Did we see a stream from Daz earlier? We did not. We did not. Everybody thinks he fell asleep. Uh, <laughs> I know his back has been hurting him, so. <laughs> Pink kills and knocked him out, maybe. I know. My dad needs help at Joanne's house. I'm going to take care of that. Ah, so I'm going to leave her there. 
I'm going to leave this open a little bit so in case you hear her. Mm-hmm. Or she comes looking for you. Alright. No worries. Um. Alright. Well. That's coming in here crying. Aw. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with a crying cat. Yeah. It jumps up on your lap and all cuddly. So. Alright, so. Let's, let's wind down some news here because there's a oh my god there's so much stuff to happen this week you know GDC came and went um, and I said last week it was funny I said if you're looking for game announcements and things like that during GDC you're looking in the wrong spot and then you know four or five developers said hey Mike shut up <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> I want to start with something that happened early in the week that caught my eye that um, I was extremely excited about, believe it or not. We don't get excited about this company uh, very often now of days, but um, Konami. Uh, Konami is bringing out three, count them, three uh, anniversary editions. Um, and that is uh, uh, it's their 50th anniversary. So they're doing um, three 50th anniversary collections. So I'm going to show you the main uh, the main picture here, uh, and we're going to go. Whoops! No, oh, I don't want to change that. I want to change that. Here we go. So there's three of them coming out. We have uh, an arcade classic edition. We have a Castlevania Anniversary Edition and a Contra Anniversary Collection. So three games, three sets of games um, that pretty much you grew up sometime in the last 30 years. You were uh, uh, you were playing one of these. Yeah. So um, going through those. I have all three of them. So first, there's an arcades collection. Um, I don't know how well you guys can see that, uh, but eh. Uh, Basically, coming out on April 18th for 20 bucks, you get Haunted Castle, Typhoon, Gradius, um, Vulcan Venture, Vulcan Ventures. Um, Hang on, let me open this thing up. Let me open this thing up to where I can see it full screen. I know you guys cannot, and that way I can make sure I read off some of these correctly, uh, because this one's this one's pretty much set in stone. Um, we have uh, Vulcan Venture, Life Force, Thundercross, which is a great game, Scramble, which was a great game, and Twin B, which was also a great game. Uh, Konami put out some really cool arcade titles way back in the day, and. They'll be um, enhanced with modern features. So, what we're what I'm hearing mm-hmm. is Twin B and some of the the multiplayer games will be online multiplayer, which is awesome. Now, did you did you catch any of these uh, any arcade when you play when you were around? Oh yeah, of course. Uh, uh, trying to see all of them. I'm gonna have to look it up. Yeah, so Haunted Castle was kind of like Castlevania. You see the guy with the whip, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Typhoon. Uh, these are mostly shmups. Shoot 'em up. So Gradius, which was actually called Nemesis, and then Vulcan mm-hmm. Venture was Gradius too. So I'm excited for this because there's a lot of good shooters in here. It's only twenty bucks. Yeah. So um, now the next one. And all this is on Xbox, right? Xbox, PC? PS4, and, uh, uh, PC, and Switch. Yeah. The next one should oh, make people very great. happy. This is the Castlevania edition. Uh, I'm going to stretch this out a little bit. I know it's stretched out, but you can see it a little better. So check this out. You get Castlevania, the original NES Castlevania, Castlevania II, Dracula's Curse, the Game Boy release of Castlevania 2 Belmont's Revenge, and the Super Nintendo version of Castlevania 4. But, look at the bottom row. It's 
So this is coming early summer 19. See all those that say coming soon? There's four games they haven't announced yet that's coming in this this Castlevania collection. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a remake of Symphony of the Night? Maybe, um, what was the Genesis Castlevania? I thought there was a Castlevania that did finally come out on the Genesis. I wouldn't know that one. Oh, you wouldn't. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was a Nintendo. And it's funny, we were, we were joking around at the end. Bloodlines, it was Bloodlines. We were, yeah, we were joking. Oh, Bloodlines. We were joking around in the, in the DM. Uh, with, I was messing with the, we were messing with Jago and mm-hmm. Dirty J and uh, Siberia. What's the hell? Nintendo vs. Sega back in the day. I said, you know, back then it was fun. You know, they joked around in on the commercials and stuff like that. Nowadays it's just stupid. People are mean about it. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. It's horrible. I, and I worked, at, I worked at Electronics Boutique during those days. Yeah. <laughs> so I was there. I was there for the Street Fighter 2. Uh-huh. For, uh, Super Nintendo. I was there for the "Ha Ha, We Got Blood" in Mortal Kombat on the Genesis side. I was yeah. there for all of that nonsense. It was fun, though. I mean, people didn't. We nobody hated each other over no. it. Like nobody, nobody came in and and like there were no there. Nobody came in and started and started throwing hands in 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 Electronics Boutique because they were a Nintendo fan or a Sega fan. It was so funny. It was just yeah. like it was it was. It was fun ribbing, but it never came to any. It never came to anything serious. No. Yeah. So, yeah. Could you imagine? I can imagine if you had like YouTube back then. Oh god. Uh, I'm glad we didn't grow up in social media. Oh, uh, me either. It oh. would have been. It would have been hell. <laughs> so, no. Back then, man. We'll see. But that's just it, too. Back then, you had to go face to face with those guys with your with your opponent. So to mm-hmm. speak, you know, if you guys wanted to, if you guys wanted to rib each other over consoles, you didn't have, you didn't have the opportunity to hide behind a social media account with a fake name. You no. had to be, you had to be eye to eye with, with the other guy. And you know what? When you're, when you're, when your eyes, when you're eye to eye with, with another man, you don't <laughs> say, you don't, you don't necessarily say the things you can say when you can shut your, shut your computer off and, and step away from Twitter for yeah. a minute. Player player one versus player two. Uh huh. So it was a lot of fun back then. But look at these. I mean, these are these were solid. Of course, these were solid games. Castlevania um, and Super Castlevania Four was was hot. So if they could add Bloodlines, though, Bloodlines was so good. It was so good. So there's a good bit of Castlevania that's left to be announced here. So. I mean, you can only imagine the other games that um, that might make it because there were a ton of them. Yeah. Um, I mean, there was there's a ton of Castlevania games that you could put in there. Symphony of the Night, like I said, Legends, a Legacy of Darkness. I'm just going over Castlevania Chronicles uh, on the original PlayStation. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, the the there's a pretty decent list here. Curse of Darkness. Uh, so, harmony of uh, harmony of despair, Lords of Shadow. So, there's a there's a there's a good there's a good chance. I mean, there's. So when we get these, I don't know. They might be. This might be kind of like an E3 announcement. Well, it says early summer, so yeah. Hopefully, them bringing out these games, especially Castlevania and Contra. It'd be cool if this kind of leads to maybe something down the road, like a new game, something a modern, modern Contra or mm. and a new Castlevania. Because mm. the Castlevania animation, the series on Netflix was great. It was. I only saw a couple of episodes, but <clears throat> it was really yeah. cool. Yeah. So, um, and the other, the other one. Speaking of Contra, all right, I don't like that stretched out like that. I'm going to unstretch it. Is the Contra uh, collection. So now that is the original Arcade Contra, the original Arcade Super Contra, Super C, which I think was the Super NES version? Yeah, I think so. 
and then Contra 3, uh, The Alien Wars. So, what's up, Jago? Um, and, and again, look down Jago's below. just in time for Stanga Clock. Yeah, Stanga Clock. <laughs> so if you look down at, um, at the bottom, once again, there are four coming soons. So there aren't, I mean, there aren't as many Contra games as there are Castlevania games. So I have to think, I have to hope <laughs> that one of those games, uh, again, I know you're not a Genesis guy, but one of those games, Jago, back me up on this. One of those games is going to have to be Contra Hardcore. That was such a killer Contra game. It was awesome. So the the other ones in the the other ones in the um, in the series because there aren't a lot was um, let's see Contra Hardcore uh, Contra Four for the DS Contra Shattered Soldiers for the PS2 Neo Contra for the PS2 Contra Legacy of War for the original PlayStation uh, Contra Force for the NES. And Contra Rebirth for the Wii. And then C, the Contra Adventure. So none of those are really, uh, you know. Yeah. No, none of those are blockbusters. But Contra Hardcore, let me tell you, that was, that game was insane on the Genesis. And it pushed the Genesis. Because it did a lot of the, a lot of the um, side-scrolling and then kind of forward, backward scrolling uh, levels and stuff like that. And there was, mm-hmm. it was, it was unbelievable. It was, it was just, it was such a good game. So we, my, my brother may have had it because he, when I graduated from high school and went off to the Air Force, uh, he had a Genesis, and then he got the Saturn uh, and the Dreamcast. So he went through. You know, it's funny. Whenever I left, you know, he went through the the Sega uh, period. <laughs> so, and I, yeah, every time I came home, I just a lot of times we played sports games when I came home. So, all right, so that's that. Um, but well, it, it was you know it was a little, yeah, you're right. It it it's it had a little bit of slowdown in it. I mean, but. The gr- but graphically, it was gorgeous. You have to admit that, Jago. Uh, what's up, Eddie Shaddai? What's going on, my brother? Yeah, Welcome what's going in. on? All right, so these are the collections coming out. This one's also coming out early summer. So we got this, con- uh, this um, uh, Castlevania and the Arcade Classics. And if they're all 20 bucks, if I can get all of these for a grand total of uh, 60 bucks, then they're mine. Just done. Done, done. I'm in. So, uh, that is that. One other small piece of news. Um, it's it's kind of well, I, I say it's small, but it's it, it's. I guess it's kind of interesting. Um, let me grab a picture here to bring up uh, something that you knew at some point was probably coming, but. Um, yeah, I guess. I guess now is as good as any. Uh, <laughs> mobile. Sorry, still trying to grab. Um, I've got a new format where instead of just throwing all of my images into one folder, mm-hmm. um, I have all of my old game folders from the old website. So all of my old pictures, all of my old videos, um, everything that came off of nlgaming.com. So I decided, well, since I have that, why not just keep making game folders? And then if we ever want to come back and talk about something, we have it. Yeah. So uh, so anyway, Call of Duty is going mobile. So we're getting Call of Duty on phones. You can pre-register for this now. It's free to play. Um, head, you know, There'll be head-to-head favorite maps like Nuketown and Crash, all optimized for mobile. So, congratulations, Call of Duty console and PC players. You are subsidizing mobile. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And it will be first person. 
Um, let's see. It is a standalone mobile title that features a collection of fan favorite maps, competitive game modes, familiar characters, and signature weapons from across our beloved franchises, including Black uh, Ops and Modern Warfare. Uh, there. Let's see, multiplayer is the foundation. Team up with friends to play your favorite modes in iconic maps. Team deathmatch on Nuketown. Frontline on Crash. We have a lot more coming, so you can pre-register. Uh, right now, it is Google Play and App Store, so you can grab that. Minimum device specifications, they don't list. And then they're going to... Um, so basically, if you pre-register now on callofduty.com slash mobile, you can uh, be the first to play the pre-launch betas. Mm. So there you go. If you have not had enough Call of Duty. Well, I mean, they're, they are looking at what Fortnite has done on the mobile scene. Mm. They want a piece of that pie. I'm surprised they're not bringing... Uh, one, of, one of their maps is going to be their, their Battle Royale version on mobile. Well, you, they might. So, I mean, they yeah. might. You never know. I mean, they, they, this is but, just pre. This is just pre stuff. You know, yeah. they they could very well. Um, they could very well bring the uh, because you know Fortnite did it, so you know they're going to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and uh, I think Apex will need to follow suit also. And of course, they made a lot of money. Yeah. So far. Speaking of but, uh, Apex, cause, yeah. Well, I, <laughs> but you know what's funny? You were saying that uh, us console players, you know, we're subsidizing these mobile games. A little bit. Pretty soon, it's going to be these mobile games are going to start subsidizing everybody else. Well, this is you true. Got about potential two billion mobile. You know, mostly everybody in the world is on mobile. So not everybody's on a console. This is true, and this is the best place to buy. It's the best place for microtransactions. Yeah, you, 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 the I'm telling you, the the mobile market is not as not as savvy when it comes to that as the console market. So, don't get me wrong, Jago. I'm with you. I am not a. a I I have I have. Let me. I can count on my on my one hand here, <laughs> my one hand, how many minutes, zero, how many minutes I have played Fork Knife. I, really, I have not put a single moment into that game. A yeah. single moment. Same with me. So. I call it Fort Knot. Fort Knot. It's not my thing. And I played, I enjoyed uh, PUBG for a while, but, you know. I got other games to play. I have many more games to play. And, you know, mobile is just not a natural thing for me to um, go play, especially in certain, you know, shooters or... Uh, so, you know, I know we're going to talk about this later, but, you know, I, I can't remember the last time I played a game on mobile. Um, and I have a Switch, and I hardly even jump on the Switch. My daughter plays it. I, sometimes I forget about the switch, you know. I yeah, I mean, other than oh, what is that game that I have on here that I play when I'm sitting and watching television? Uh, what the hell is it called? Hold on, it's called uh, Wordscapes. I play Wordscapes on here. Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. <coughs> My wife has a digital coloring book. That's mm. that's what we do, us old people. Yeah. So I, I can't I can't sit here with a phone and I can't do this and you know I can't like do this and try to move and shoot and mm -hmm. it's just not that's not for me. You know, I can't make that happen. Hey, what's up, Jeff? Hey Jeff. So Apex Legends is better than Fortnite. I I would be honest with you, for, for full disclosure, I haven't put much time in Apex Legends either. It's been it's literally been all cracked down. I've been wanting to try it. I have it downloaded. Uh, I played the. Um, I need to give it a shot. Yeah, I played the 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 opening beta, and I it, and it's not it's not because I didn't like it or didn't enjoy it. It's just time. Mm -hmm. I, I have no I have no time. Yeah. Um. 
so I have to I have to game carefully. Uh, however, as you were alluding to, tell these tell the good people how much they've made. Was it what ninety what ninety five something million? Ninety two. Ninety two. Oh, close. Million dollars. Wow. So that is the best launch month for any free to game play ever. Which means and, people are buying shit. Yeah, and that's just on consoles, right? Um, is it on PC? It doesn't say. I'm looking at an article from yeah. Forbes. Um, I don't think it's on PC. Oh, you mean the game itself? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yes, yes it is. And, and the reason that it is, hold on. The reason that it is, um, the top grossing titles by category worldwide ranked by February 2019 earnings according to uh, Superdata, which is a Nielsen company, which uh, my wife works for. Um, but she doesn't work in the Superdata area. Um, yeah. Apex Legends is the sixth top grossing title on PC. Uh -huh. It actually surpassed World of Tanks and Dota 2. It is wow. catch it is it is it, it it's right behind Fortnite as far for total top total grossing. So um I mean think about that how quickly how quickly it jumped to number 6. And I know people who spend a good bit of money on World of Tanks. World of Tanks is highly successful on purpose yeah. they, they sell a ton of of uh, whatever the currency is there to buy tanks and whatnot mm -hmm. so um, now according to um, the part of the reason that that it hasn't caught Fortnite yet is mobile which is why Apex Legends might as you say might might want to hit mobile. I I think it will eventually. I mean, Tim Sweeney says uh, Tim Sweeney says Fortnite is almost at two hundred and fifty million players. Wow. So, but I, I mean, you know, I've witnessed it here. You know, with family and friends, I've seen their. You know, uh, when their kids, I've been around their kids. Their kids come over, they're on their phone and they're playing Fortnite. Mm -hmm. Now lately. I would say lately that's kind of died off. They've gotten a little bit older. So they're kind of, you know, Fortnite, even though it's still successful, but it's kind of dying off a little bit. Now they're, you know, jumping on other games. So, but they're still playing it. Kids nowadays are playing mobile more so. Right. So that's, I mean, that's huge, though. It's absolutely yeah. huge. And, and, you know, like, yeah, something like this may not be up Jago's thing to play, but Apex being successful can help uh, fund, help fund uh, Titanfall 3. So, and I'm sure that's what he wants. It could be. I mean, you know, more money in their pocket. You know, help fund other games. Well, of course it's going to. But remember, I, I you know what they got to do first. <laughs> they need to put their Star Wars game out first. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. But so, uh, yeah, of course. You know, I give I, me a good Star Wars game EA, give me at least you know a good, you know, I'm hoping it has a story to it. So, a good one. So, I'm starving for some Star Wars good games. Well, that's the other thing too. Is, um you know, it, it, Star Wars is must is must for them first. And speaking of Star Wars, quick, quick, I want to bring up real quick. Uh, there was a rumor going around that someone had showed that Disney was starting up a Lucas Gaming uh, studio back up, right? You know, but then J uh, Jason Schreier shot that down and said that was just that is not happening. What it is is just 
the Lucas Gaming, Lucas Gaming that is part of Disney is what's overseeing what EA is working on. You know, they're, it's their job to, to you know, oversee all Star Wars games that are being made. Okay. So somebody, so somebody took it as, well, it looks like Disney's starting up their own Star Wars gaming studio back up, but that's not the case. So. Got gotcha. you. Well, as long as they're overseeing it, I guess. I mean, it's it's. Yeah. You know, the, the, I th- you want to think lessons learned from Battlefront 2? Maybe. Yeah. You know, and, and, and look, Battlefront 2 wasn't bad. It was just, it was, it was not the, it wasn't the, I guess it wasn't the blockbuster they were. No. You know. Well, I got a lot of flack before oh, it even came out. So. Yeah, it did. It yeah. did. And uh, some of it, some of it justified, some of it nonsense. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. Um. Man, we haven't even hit the big stuff yet. I, I want to. Uh, we're gonna get to the big <laughs> stuff last. And um, Jeff, just let me know in the chat when we get to when we get to Google if I can uh, read off what you tweeted me earlier. So mm. I do. So it. Is, I do want to show you something. Um, there are there are some also so before we even get to the you know the Google Stacia and uh, Stadia and stuff like that um, a couple of other uh, a couple of other companies made some kind of big kind of big news um, first off let's take a look at this really cool trailer right now oh, not that one Oh, let me uh, share. Oops. Good morning. I am Dr. J.M. Lounsbury from the Ministry of Drink and Health Regulation. While many working adults start their day with coffee, we recommend to switch to milk to complete your regimen of nutrifying activity. If you are making the switch, a very great annoyance which occurs often with milk occurs during the pouring of it. If you tackle a particularly vicious pour without taking the proper care, you're bound to splash all over. Your whole day is ruined. To demonstrate proper pouring technique, I shall apply my face protector. Okay. Splendid. <coughs> The normal way to pour milk is to raise the pouring container and angle it at no more than 45 degrees positively as you approach your drinking vessel. I will now begin to pour. That guy is creepy. Yes, he is. (laughs) So, big news. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Cuphead coming to the Switch. Mm -hmm. That is unbelievable. And um, so, I wanted to pause that there. So here's the here's the thing though. If you (laughs) yeah, it's like Cuphead, of course. Yeah. If you saw Studio MDHR. Tweet this out. They actually thanked Xbox and Microsoft. Apparently, this was a <coughs> this was a request by Microsoft mm-hmm. to put the game on Switch. Isn't that weird? I mean, it's not weird. I mean, by weird, I mean it's kind of an odd thing, right? It's but, got there's got to be something going on between Xbox and Nintendo where. They're like willing and dealing. Like maybe an Xbox say, hey, you know, we'll put some, uh, we'll put Cuphead. You know, we're publishing it, but we'll allow it to come on Switch. Uh, maybe Ori. You know, certain games. I think you I, know. Yeah. But what I want to know is what from Nintendo is going to come over to Xbox. I'm not sure that Nintendo publishes. That's, I, that's. I just wonder if this is sort of the some of the the okay. You know, let us you know come come let us 
let us let us supply you with Xbox Live, mm-hmm. and you can you can also play games like Cuphead and things like that. I mean, I mean with <coughs> Xbox with Xbox Live on Nintendo because I because I you had read somewhere where okay now uh, with my like Cuphead and Minecraft uh, gamers can get those Xbox Live achievements even though they're playing on Nintendo. So I think they, you know, can sign in Xbox Live on Nintendo and get those achievements for, you know, they want. So, I mean, the Xbox is getting something out of it. They're still, I'm, you know, still going to make some money off of it. Sure. So, but, you know, I'd like to see what is Nintendo going to, you know, throw, what bones are they going to throw towards Xbox? I, I don't know. And we know they, you know, they love their, they, you know, I can't imagine they would, any Mario game, Zelda, you know. I mean, they are, they are branching out into other things. So, um, yeah. you know, they're, 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 um, they're, they've got to deal with uh, Todd McFarlane for some, um, some toys. Mm-hmm. Um, they are working on uh, on March first. They had put out a tweet that they were looking for a merchandise production artist. So they're starting to license these guys out for merchandise. Yeah. So and and Jago, I think, is where exactly where we are. There is, there is, um, and I'm getting to that, Jeff. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> there is something else going on. You're right. There's uh, we, mm-hmm. you and I have been saying this for how long now? Yeah. That there is something that that we don't know going behind the scenes between Nintendo and Microsoft, mm-hmm. and I mean if you and again I, I I I'm if you read this tweet, golly, we're f- just floored by the reaction to our big announcements today. A special thanks to the wonderful teams at Xbox and ID at Xbox for helping make this happen. That is, they are they are specifically specific. Specifically, saying that Xbox and, and Chris Charles' team had a hand in this. Yeah. And then I start hearing that, you know, just in, kind of in the background that that they almost they almost asked Studio MDHR to do this. And this is this is incredible. I mean, mm-hmm. I, this is. No, I mean, it's awesome. Yeah. This game definitely fits. For a, a Nintendo Switch, it does. It's a beautiful, colorful game. I mean, it look great on the Switch. Yes, it does. So yeah. I, maybe I'll try it on the Switch, and I'll probably have a better chance on the Switch. Well, I don't know. You you could play yeah. solo, or you can yeah. play co op with the two Joy Cons. Yeah. Um. So here's the other things that are going on because uh, Project Jeff alluded to it. I just hadn't gotten to it yet. There's a big update coming as well. So um, also when it comes out for the Switch. On uh, Steam, Mac, and PC, uh, uh, Xbox One, there is a free content update that is coming with uh, all kinds of stuff. So first off, um, you will be able to select Mugman right from the start. So you'll be able to pick either Cuphead or Mugman at the beginning of the game, which is new. Um, All the game's cutscenes play out in fabulous locomotion, whatever that is. (laughs) Um, fully localized text in 11 additional languages. So in addition to English, they're going to be offering Cuphead in French, Italian, German, European Spanish, Latin Spanish, Brazilian Portuguese, Polish, Russian, Japanese, Korean, and simplified Chinese. (laughs) So um, they even partnered with expert calligraphers to bring the boss and level uh, title uh, lettering to... Korea, China, and Japan, drawing inspiration from the early cartoon works of each country. There's all kinds of new animation and art. So Cuphead and Mugmen have multiple fight intros. Legendary Chalice now grants super arts with a blast of magical energy. Mummies explode in a shower of confetti. Dozens of other dazzling additions and adjustments throughout the game. Some bug fixes, tweaks, and more. So... Uh, all that is coming with the Switch release and then as a free patch to anyone who owns Cuphead on any platform. Nice. So. Huh. 
Yeah. This is huge news. I mean, mm-hmm. this is bigger than I, you know, I think, you know, most, and, and this is where, this is where the difference between you and I and the, and the rest of the internet, um, you know, the rest of the internet is going, oh no, Microsoft lost an exclusive game. Yeah. So, Microsoft is not, look, I think, I think we are starting to get the, the proof of the pudding. Microsoft is not competing with Nintendo here. No, they're not. This is there's they're they are considering. I did. I don't know how long before they just consider Nintendo a partner. Well, I mean, I think that's what they're looking at. Is that Xbox bring does things that Nintendo don't? Hey, remember, remember, we've heard that before, right? Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, but they look at it as they both bring something different to the gaming community, to gamers. And uh, I think they're trying to, you know, hey, let's partner up, you know. Uh, it's good. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Now, Xbox and Sony, you ain't going to see that. No. So that that is straight up competition right there. And, and Nintendo, they compete with Sony in Japan. They so, do. well, yeah, I mean, Nintendo is top dog in Japan, you know, I'm doing, they're not going to share, take, be friendly. And I don't think so. Not like the way Xbox and Nintendo. Do. Well, and there's, and, and, you know, remember there's a history. Yeah. There's a history between Nintendo and Sony that wasn't a good one. So any, you know, Microsoft does not, um, you know, Microsoft was never, was never an enemy to them the way that Sony was. No. I mean, Sony flat out, you know, Sony flat out went made their own system. Now, don't get me wrong. Story is that that's some of that's on Nintendo, but, Mm -hmm. you know, still, those guys just don't like each other. So. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Nah, but this is great. I'm glad to see this. So I'm sure we're going to see more games where, you know, uh, games like this come over to Switch, and games are going to be cross-play and cross-progression mm-hmm. between Nintendo and Xbox. So, very much so. Um, I think that's going to happen. I think this is. I think. I think that's a. I think that's a formality that that won't happen. I think that you're going to see. I man, now I'm starting to. I mean, I you know you hate to be you hate to come up and then be let down, but I'm starting to really get excited for E3. Yeah, no, I, I, even though, you know, some people are not going to be at E3 in a big way, I think E3 is still going to be pretty good. Yep. Still got a lot of developers and publishers that go. Yep. Now we'll right see. Now, so. you know, yeah. we'll, we'll see. I'm still still not convinced that the show is going to continue to be what it is. But um, this this one this one's shaping up to be big in some ways. Yeah. So. Well, you know, I had mentioned, talked to someone in tweet about E3, and I said, E3 has to evolve. And so we saw a little bit of that last year where now they allowed where people can come into the floor, uh, pay to, to get into E3, right? That's, right? You know, now they're doing that like what PAX is doing. So that's a change. So we'll see what other things. They got a new guy in charge, so we'll see what they do. They're going to have to do something. They're gonna have to evolve because you, you got Microsoft is not on the floor. They're not doing their convention there at E3 on E3's floor. They're doing it outside, and they're kind of bringing their stuff out out, out of E3 floor. Um, I'm not sure. Once we see a map, you know, I'm, I won't be surprised. Maybe there's a mixer booth there. I think they had one there last year, but that was about it. And that's what they do at PAX. They have right. a mixer booth, so and a small other booth, but. Uh, yeah, E3 is going to have to evolve. Mm-hmm. Find a way to uh, work with all these uh, publishers. Yeah, or they could just, or they could just send them over to Epic. <laughs> yeah. So, and just be part of Epic Store. Which, by the way, speaking of uh, speaking of the Epic Store, next up on the on the. Uh, on the docket here. So, mm-hmm. other big news. 
Quantic Dream is bringing Detroit, Beyond, and Heavy Rain. So Detroit become human, Beyond Heavy Soul, Beyond Two Souls, and Heavy Rain to the PC, only on the Epic Store. Yeah. So first off, another big announcement. This is yeah. an expansion of Quanti- uh, Quantic Dreams. These were uh, previously PlayStation only, and now they're coming to PC. So again. You know, uh, on the internet, of course, you've got, oh my god, they're losing exclusives. That's, it, this is, <laughs> welcome to 2019, folks. People want to make money. People want yep. people want to reach more, reach more of an audience. Um, now, yeah, and isn't Quantum Dreams, <laughs> now they've kind of gone independent. <laughs> right? So, did they announce something about that? Well, they did. They were gonna, they were, um, uh, they're no longer working with publishers, so they're they're going to be self-publishing everything from here on out. Yeah. What I found so this is this is what I do find interesting about this though over Cuphead. Cuphead, you know, Studio MDHR owned owns that uh, owns that either owns that IP, right? Mm-hmm. I don't think Microsoft owns Cuphead. No, I don't think so. So. And I'm just and I'm just double checking that while we're talking, and the off chance that I'm wrong, but it's developed. Well, no, it's developed and published by Studio MDHR, so it's not even published by Microsoft. I, I don't know. I they just guess, probably had some exclusive deal, right? You know. But even at that, I wonder if I wonder if there was. Well, they gave them so. So I remember this now. Microsoft gave them money. Yeah. So they remember the game was only going to be a boss rush, and then once Microsoft talked to them, they gave them they gave them more funding to do the uh, to add to it. So that's when they added the the run and gun and the yeah. the semi um, uh, kind of the semi platforming levels. So there had you're right there had to have been something between Microsoft and. Uh, and they're about that, but you know, maybe and maybe some of it was Studio MDHR being um, being loyal because mm-hmm. you know, hey, Microsoft helped us be- make this game what it is, and Microsoft comes along, like I said, and says, hey, why don't you go put this? On? You, you go ahead and put this on the Switch. Go get some more. Go get some more. You know? Yeah, they're gonna sell well on the Switch, I think. Agreed. So I guess this answers the question for me on um, on Quantic Dream as to who owns these IPs. I mean, typically, if you put a game out on the PlayStation platform that's exclusive, typically Sony owns the IP. I'm guessing that Sony does not own these. Um, they may not, but they may have paid for the publishing rights. To be exclusive on Sony, because um, they've had other, you know, third-party deals that were exclusive, but they don't own the IP, right? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and and I've heard I have not played these games, but I've heard like Jake Jago said he enjoyed these games. Oh, Peter! Other, but, I, that's why I wish Peter was yeah. here tonight, man. He yeah. loved Detroit, and Detroit. It did good, but it, I don't think it did as well as I think Quantum Dream was hoping. Yeah, so I don't know. It, it makes sense for them if they want to. They want to get these games out there on PC, especially Epic. Epic is growing. Um, you need to get these games out there, get people to play them, and then that way, you know, their future games, people will be like, "Oh yeah, I remember playing Detroit and Beyond and Heavy Rain. I'm gonna go play the new game." So. Good night, Jago. We love you too, brother. Hey. Um, don't you, you the we're we're still working on uh, early yeah. April Sega show so I'll let you know when so that you can get some sleep you get a nap beforehand. Yeah, I told him we got to get him on and plan that out. So yep, I'm still cool. waiting to do that. Yeah, so, uh, probably in the next couple of weeks we're doing a Sega show. Um, so yeah, I mean this is you know because um, remember Quantic, Quantic Dream got funding from a Chinese company, uh, NetEase. So, um, you know, they're, they decided to go multi-platform. Um, huh. you know, 
Did that NetEase also give some money? Give some money to Bungie. Oh, who knows? <laughs> Did they? I think so. They're, but it was for a different, a mobile game or something mobile. Hmm. Um. Oh no, they purchased a minority stake in Bungie. That would be it. They invested yeah. more than one hundred million dollars in the studio. <laughs> That wow. was last June. Yeah. To build new non Destiny IPs. So um so yeah, I mean, with this, I mean they're you know now the question is is will you know, will we see these games on the Xbox? Probably not. Um but it looks like we're gonna see anything new that comes out of them from it because they did say we will be present on all other relevant platforms. Mm-hmm. So um We'll see. Wouldn't it be funny though if Detroit Become Human does end up, you know, maybe on a uh, Project X Cloud or <laughs> something like that? Yeah, hey, I, I won't be surprised. They want to make more money. Yeah. Shoot, and you I... know that 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 tweet from the Quantum Dreams, the wherever it was that, you know, said if you want to play Detroit, you can only play it on PlayStation. Well, and then there was another tweet about. If you want to play Detroit and uh, Beyond and Heavy Rain, now you can play it on on PC. Right. So, you know, it's you know when you do st- tweet stupid stuff like that, it kind of comes back on you know. Yeah. To haunt you a little bit, so, stupid. Oh yeah. So, and, and I don't think you're uh, again. I don't. My my guess is because it's published by Sony. Um, yeah. I don't think you're gonna see Detroit. Um, I'm not sure about uh, Beyond Two Souls or Heavy Rain. I don't know who publishes them. I'm assuming Sony does. I, yeah, I think Sony did. Um, so yeah, not likely. Not likely you'll see it on the Xbox. But no, nah, yeah. But but coming to PC and then anything afterwards. So we'll see what David Cage has up his uh, up his sleeve going forward. By the way, speaking of the Epic Store and exclusives. The Outer Worlds After Party, and guess what else is coming exclusively to um, PlayStation uh, to uh, uh, little, to the Epic <laughs> Store? Control, Remedy's yeah. new game. Not surprised. Yeah. Hey, Epic is not playing around. They are not. I mean, they have to attract people from. Steam, and the only way to do that is you have to go get these deals. Yep, these third-party deals. Uh, uh, to to me, third party is just as important as a uh, first party. They so. are. They are. You've got to have games. You've got to have games that that attract you to your platform. Yeah. And Epic is going after some biggins. Yep. Now they claim that they're not going to keep doing this, but. Um, Still. So, all right. Uh, but, but, but next up, man, we're just we're flying through. Um, may as well hit. So, for some reason, Twitch has decided that the the word NPD is a bad word. So I couldn't put it into the description anymore. But uh, here is the. Uh, who was hating on Bungie? I just said they had, <laughs> I just said Netty's invested a hundred million dollars in them. So, here is the MPD numbers for February 2019. Now, as always, uh, we don't give a rat's behind about console sales. Um, I don't even know who was the top console seller in February, and I don't care. But let's take a look at the uh, uh, the the top 20 uh, games here. And again, remember, this is not by units sold. So it, it, this list does not mean that physically uh, Jump Force, you know, Anthem sold more copies than Jump Force. It means that they made more money than uh, than the other, you know, than the game before it. Mm-hmm. So um, taking number one is Anthem, and that's, for you know, for all the flack that Anthem took, um, that's not not bad. Not no. bad. And I will say this on that: I played the heck out of Anthem. Right now, I, I love Anthem. I know it has its issues, but I do think that all the negativity uh, was overblown. Uh, and when you get when lately. 
to me, all that negative noise is the minority that represents gamers out there playing these games. And so I think a lot of people are enjoying Anthem. It is, you know, so, and they're not listening to all the negativity. They're just yeah. playing it. And yeah, you're going to have issues, but you can, you know, every game has issues. You hope that the developers support it and they fix it and you go back and play. So. Well, and it was the second biggest launch for a Bioware game. Yeah. So, <coughs> you know, being up there with Mass Effect, not bad. Yeah, I think being a new IP and, you know, seeing that the, you have the, all the big guys, you know, Casey Hudson and so on, on this, this game, you know, it, it gave people a lot of, a lot of people like, wow, you know, you know, I got to try this game out. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure people who did buy the game and tried it out, they're like, eh, this ain't what, the Bioware that I know, you know. But still, there it has a lot of fans. Absolutely. So, and so, they were yeah. looking for something to, you know, they were looking for a game that would be kind of the antiseptic to Mass Effect Andromeda. And uh, I think a lot of people found it in Anthem. Um, you know, a lot of people got to play it, play the demo. A lot of people got to play it early with EA Access, and that probably mm-hmm. helped. Yeah. Um, and keep in mind, too, that so the two, if you see two stars, so for full disclosure and to give them credit, I pull these from Venture Beat every month. So Venture Beat does a very good listing for us, and I just pull them and, and slap them into a Word document. Um, if you see two asterisks, that means that. Uh, PC sales are not included. If you see one asterisk, it means digital sales are not included. And uh, mm. if you see two aster- the three asterisks for Minecraft, um, Xbox One and PS4 digital sales are not included for Minecraft. So, software sales are up overall in February, by the way. So, you know, this is pretty good. Um, well, February was a big month for games. Yeah. And remember last year, remember what launched last uh, last February? Monster Hunter World. Yeah. So yeah. For, for this to be, mm-hmm. yeah, this is this was a pretty good, in fact, um, NPD is saying that Anthem is the best-selling game of February 2019 and now the second best-selling game, game of 2019. The second best. Hey, what's up, Monkey Punch? Monkey Punch, Just what's up? Chat. Um, so... Number two is Jump Force, which I don't care about at all. But hey, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people like it. Yeah, I'm not surprised that's number two because, you know, the anime, all the anime characters, yep. that's big for a lot of people. Uh, but I will say this: that it, the game did not impress me the way it looked when I saw that Pack South, but it did have a big fault. Like a lot of people, they're trying to play that game, but I, I just didn't think the game was that great looking, very polished. So and it did get some criticism for that, but yeah, you know, it's not hey, my kind of game. But those, yeah, not my neither. But hey, it's good to see people that do enjoy those that type. Absolutely, you know, they're playing it, so that's the whole point. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Kingdom Hearts three is hanging tough, number three. Wow. Uh, Far Cry New Dawn. So consider that that's a, um, what's well, a standalone, but it is a, uh, yeah, you know, it's it's a new chapter. It's almost like a DLC of Far Cry Five. Right. Yeah. It's a it's a standalone DLC. Yeah. yeah. Um, and not expensive either. I mean, you can get it for twenty bucks. Yeah. So to yeah, be able to four. Yeah, I plan on playing that too sometime because I did enjoy Far Cry Five. No. Oh. So I know Jago played it, and he's it enjoying lo- it. So. Yeah, it looks like the normal price is about forty bucks. So yeah. that's not bad at all. Yep. So, uh, number five, Red Dead Redemption Two, hanging in tough, hanging in tough. Uh, Resident Evil Two, number six, not bad. Yeah. Uh, Smash Brothers Ultimate, hanging in on number seven. Of course, you know the MPD numbers are littered with Nintendo Switch games. Yeah. Uh, Metro Exodus coming in at number eight, and uh, I know Witty liked it, and um, that is on my it's on my backlog, even though I haven't bought the game yet. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> I'm listening to you though. I'm, I'm almost, I'm holding out for that for that I, Game Pass announcement that you. I think it's going to be in Game Pass eventually. Yeah. At least by E3. It could be. Yeah. Just, I, we talked about this last night. Just Cause Four 
and Shadow of the Tomb Raider in there. Mm -hmm. And those games didn't come out that long ago. Yep. So, uh, Resident Evil 2, Smash Brothers, Metro Exodus, NBA 2K19. Man, people love their NBA. Yeah. That is it. That has stayed in the top 10 for gosh knows how long now. Uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 4, still hanging tough uh, in the top 10. And, of course, again, no PC sales included in that. Rounding out the top 20, uh, Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe, Mario Kart 8, and Grand Theft Auto, which just won't <laughs> die. Nope. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, it's good to see that still hanging in there. Uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Minecraft, and Minecraft, Minecraft seems to be back. You know, Minecraft's coming. Minecraft's making comes, a comeback. It, yeah, I think it's come back and forth a couple of times, right? Yep. Uh, Super Mario Party. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Yep. That game continues to stick it out, man. Which is, which, and I say this every time I see it, it is incredible that that game hangs in there, but we don't see Ghost Recon Wildlands anywhere. Yeah, I mean... Ghost Recon, Recon is, is more like a co-op. It doesn't really have that multiplayer competitive. Good uh, point. So, and 6 does. And I Good see point. my brother playing it on a regular basis. He's real big into it. So he's got his friends that they I like, I like it. Man, if we can get Anchorman and, and those guys to jump back on it, I, 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 I keep saying I'm down for a Rainbow Six night. I... I I'm going to have to jump back into it, I guess, one of these days. I used to play the heck out of uh, Rainbow Six uh, New Vegas. Oh, the Vegas games. Oh. Yeah. I used to play that big time. Mm. And that was back then when I used to, a group of my friends, that you know, we, we played Halo when that came out. Mm -hmm. Played Call of Duty when that first came out. And then we jumped on, you know, we were on the Rainbow Six. So it was all about that multiplayer online. So Very true. Mm-hmm. And I believe they're backward then, compatible. Yeah, and then see, and, there, and that's another Ubisoft. Yeah. Well, you have three Ubisoft games here in the MP, you know, top twenty. Yes, uh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Assassin's Creed, Rainbow Six, mm -hmm. and uh, Far Cry. You're right. So rounding out the last two, Madden NFL nineteen, and uh, Spider Man still hanging tough. Yeah. You know. I, I, um, you know, I don't know, I don't know what, uh, I don't know what happened to Crackdown. I guess, I guess the, I guess the fan base listened to the media on that one. Maybe it's twenty one. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I feel. I think Crackdown. It, it, yeah, a lot of negativity for so long, and you know, and part of that blame is on Xbox how they yeah, handle the messaging. Absolutely. Uh, but then there towards the end when it was coming out, the reviews to me were not some of the negative reviews were not warranted. I think it was o overlooked, you know, trying to compare it to, well, this is an Xbox exclusive. Why couldn't they have put more money into it or done this and that? It's like, can you not just enjoy the game for what it is exactly. and actually play it? Because we both played it and we just finished the final boss the other night and and we had a blast. Uh, yeah, I had fun. And then we just and then we just went around and and ran through the map and got stuff. Like I Yeah, yeah I I I could I I was missing a um propaganda tower or not a propaganda tower. I was missing one of the intels and ran around the map till I found it. Yeah, I mean I you get absorbed in getting all those orbs, you know, you just get addicted to it. So Yeah. It's just a fun, mindless jump around, kick some bass. Yeah game that that like i was saying like what we i grew up loved doing like we were playing co-op together just like i back in the day when i would play contra with my brother right. you know and that's what that game does so it did what it was supposed to do in my opinion i don't need it to be an open world game i don't need it to be this you know we've got to craft weapons and this and that no i want it to be an arcade style jump around and kick butt Thanks, so. monkey. Yeah, I. Thanks, monkey. I, 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 yeah, and and I mean, I will say it again, and I have no, and I have no qualms about this, and and I don't care who, 
Doesn't like it. Crackdown 3 was exactly what I was expecting. It was exactly what I wanted. And by evidence of the fact that, you know, for someone who cannot play games all the time, who cannot Mm -hmm. spend the amount of time that everybody else does, that I unlocked almost all of the achievements that I could, well over half the achievements, um, including going and getting some of the stuff that, um, you know, going back and getting gold. And, you know, I was... I was like, why didn't I get why didn't I get the achievement for the rooftop races? Oh, I missed one gold and went back yeah. and did it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and, and to, real quick to Project Jeff, he's right. It is open world. But I you know, I would just I, I, I meant like trying to compare it to, you know, people trying to think it's a you know, GTA or you know Right. That type of open world RPG. No, like it it's doesn't not. have to be. It's not. Yeah, yeah no. Or some 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 story that's going to make you cry and laugh and yeah, whatever. You know, I think we've been, but, but you know what, but you know what, it's, it's, it's so funny that, you know, everybody complains about everything being, um, you know, all these battle Royale games and they go to play every single one of them. Mm-hmm. So. No, nah, I'd recommend you know people you know, you know get get Game Pass, uh, go try it out, just have fun. It's quick and easy. If you like achievements, I tell you what, you're gonna get achievements quick in that game. So yeah, you will. You will. But um, you know, I but and again, we just like we just rolled around the map, you know. After we were done, we just we just headed out and, and spent uh, another hour and a half. Yeah, yeah, we did about two um, two and a half hours uh, after we beat the boss. Uh, nah, fun game, and I still got to go back and do all the. I think all I have left is the races. So you know, Crackdown three Crackdown is not known for its driving, uh, but Actually, the driving's not bad in the game. So no, go, it's not. Go, go uh, yeah, it's not. It's not, not great, fantastic. but it's not bad. It's not, yeah, it's not. Yeah, but it's not bad. Yeah. So, uh, I I just I you know you know I don't I don't get it. I don't I don't understand. I just don't understand what um what people want. Uh, well, and then, and you know, watch here uh, a, a year later. People are going to play it and like, oh, you know what? This game actually isn't bad. You know, and that, I've seen that with, you know, people when the whole hate for Xbox in 2013. So, you know, people passed on Rise and, you know, then people passed on Sunset Overdrive and so on. And they go back and play these games. They're like, yeah, these games are actually pretty good. You know, well, I mean, you know, if you'd like to play games, maybe if you just calm down. <laughs> you know, just give a game a try. Right. Don't worry about what platform it's on or have, you know, whatever. Or you didn't like Xbox's messaging. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, well. Who the effing cared to just game people? Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. But that, the, the great month, you know, back on the MPD for the February, great month. A lot, you know, you know, Crackdown 3. Jump Force, Anthem, Metro Exodus. I mean, all in, you know, oh, coming out in February. Yeah. So, and New Dawn. And I, a lot of people I, on my feed, you know, Xbox, people that I talk to, everybody has played all those games. Except for Jump Force. I don't know anybody that's on my... I don't you know, know that's not, anybody who's played Jump Force either. Yeah, I don't either. So, but, hey, people are enjoying it, so... No, I will be. I will be interested to see what March looks like, because March was a lot of smaller games. Um, yeah, uh, pre- I'm pretty sure we're going to see Division Two at the top. Yeah, I would think so. I think yeah. we're going to see Division Two. Um, well, Sekiro will probably be up there too. Yeah, Sekiro will be up there because that, came out, that came out. That came out today. Minute. Seen a couple people playing it right now. Yeah. Um. 
The, uh, you know what else will be the, sh- the show, MLB The Show, because that comes out on the 26th. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that'll that's, definitely be there. That, be that's probably going to be the number two game. Yeah. That'll probably be the number two game. Um, yeah, and that's really... Yeah. That's really it. Everything else, I mean, you know... I, well, this, I think it's kind of good. I do, too. It, it, it's kind of slowing down a little bit before E3. Uh, I think Days Gone comes out, what, in April? Yep. No. But, uh, Dead or Alive 6 came out March 1st, so there'll be room on there'll be room on the list for... for oh, yeah, and, and then Mortal Kombat 11. Does that come out in April? That comes out in April. Okay, so, yeah, April's going to be a pretty good month. Yeah, I'll tell you what comes oh. out. Actually, everything that comes out in April... Um, Super Dragon Ball Heroes. Everybody loves their Super Dragon Ball. Mm-hmm. Um, looking at big releases. Um, the Final Fantasy XX2 HD remaster comes out April 16th. Uh, so, of course, Cuphead comes out on the Switch. Uh, the Arcade Classics comes out. Mortal Kombat comes out on the 23rd of April. Um Days Gone comes out on the 26th. Um, Final Fantasy 12, The Zodiac Age comes out on the 30th. And that's it for that. So I think uh, April will be tied up with um, Days Gone, most likely. That's probably going to be your number one game in April. Is mm, I don't know. Mortal Kombat 11 might, might make this. I might be the number two. Well, you're right. It's a multi game. Yes. Yeah. But it. But very right, popular. So, so Days Gone might be the number two game. I can see it number two. So oh, then Jeff. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know why it's not on my list here. Uh, DMC five came out. Um, That'll be up there in March. Yeah. When did that? I can see that in two number two ago. slot. Why don't I see that on my list here? I've got a, a release list of. Maybe I just missed it. Dead or Alive six. Well, Devil, Devil May Cry Five already came out. Right? Did it come out in oh, January okay. or did it come out in, in no, February? No, it just came out this month, March. March. That's what I'm looking. Yeah, I'm looking in March. Yeah. Oh, that's that. Oh, show. here it is. Here it is. I missed it. It came out March eighth. Yeah. Got it. That made a lot of noise. That's gonna be. Yeah, up there. that that's gonna be up there. Yeah. So, I mean, that's gonna those those games are gonna round out your top ten. Mm-hmm. So, you know, plus you'll probably have some more Anthem. You'll probably have some more. Red Dead, you'll probably have, you know, um, you know, and of course, five. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'm just reading them off a list. I just missed one. I just missed Devil May Cry. For goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Uh, next up on the docket, a couple of uh, quick, uh, more quick things. So, both Microsoft and Nintendo, or Microsoft and Sony. Sony has made a little bit of news here. Um, they, uh, both companies, are following Nintendo's lead and coming up with their own um, little directs. So you know, how Nintendo does the uh, Nintendo mm-hmm. Direct. So um, um, be right back. Okay. So while you're doing that, I will explain what's going on. So first up. Uh, starting on so on Monday at 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, 5 p.m. Eastern time, uh, we are getting a state of the play, state of play from Sony. And basically, what this is, uh, it is a first episode of a game of a show where they are going to give you updates and announcements from the world of PlayStation, PlayStation, PlayStation. PlayStation. So it says their first episode will showcase upcoming PS4 and PSVR software, including new trailers, new game announcements, and new gameplay footage. So basically, you know, they, look, let's be honest, they saw Nintendo doing directs, they saw Microsoft doing their inside Xbox, Mm -hmm. they're doing state of play. Yeah. Um, Now... I, you know, uh, I'll be checking that out because I'll actually be, I actually work from home on Monday, so at 5 o'clock I'll be uh, checking it out. We'll tweet out any um, any big news that comes from it, and then of course, you know, have something to talk about next week. Um, I don't think there's any reason to live stream it or anything like that. It's just a, it's just a web show. Yeah. Um, but it's going to be the first of a, um, 
of a new series that they're doing. So it's not just a one-off. So, um, so just leading to maybe a monthly type deal? I don't know. It doesn't say. Or just, just whenever they have news, I guess. Yeah. Sid, <clears throat> Sid Schumann didn't give much um, much of a, much more information on this. It just simply says, we're introducing a new video program called, and the first episode kicks off on Monday. Um, you can watch it on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, or Facebook, and then there will be a VOD version shortly after the episode airs. Um, so it says, and this is just the beginning. State of Play will return throughout the year with more updates and announcements. So I'm assuming it's going to be at least quarterly, you'd have to think. So Yeah, I guess we'll find out. Yeah. I'm in, I'm I'm down for any new, especially PSVR. Um, somebody tweeted me about a game on PSVR that I have to play and check out for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, it looked like a western, so I'm I'm gonna try that out. Mm. And I'm I'm apt for more. Uh, I'm apt for more. I could I could I could use some more uh, some more VR games in my arsenal. Ones that don't make me throw up. <laughs> so, uh, so not to be outdone, um, but uh, Microsoft is also adding another show to their uh, to uh, what they already have with the Inside Xbox, and they are calling this one the ID at Xbox Game Pass. So a little bit different than um, what they show in the uh, in the Inside Xbox show. Uh, what they are doing is they're going to stream. Basically, it's a stream highlighting great indie games. So theirs is coming March 26, which is also which is on Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific time, so mm. noon uh, Eastern Standard, 11 o'clock your time, fast. And uh, so basically, in this show, you can expect to learn more about the hottest ID at Xbox titles coming to Xbox Game Pass, mm. with new reveals, gameplay highlights. And conversations with the developers, fans will be able to check out uh, the first episode right on the um, Xbox YouTube page. So, and yes, Game Pass rocks. Game Pass yes. absolutely rocks. Um, I know Worrywart was questioning, you know, why can they not just add this into the inside Xbox? Which, you know, I, they I, did. I, 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 huh? They at one point did. Yeah, and but I think they, you know, there was also criticism of well, the show's too long, right? So they had to scale back. So this, I think them doing this kind of puts focus on certain games, you know, those indie developers that that you know, because inside Xbox, they're gonna have they're gonna talk about what's the biggest, what's going, with the bigger things going on that month, you know, game big games that are coming out. So I think this show kind of focuses on the smaller developers, All right? Well, it so. seems to be specific to Game Pass. Yeah, which is cool because I, I think you know that well, that's what they're trying to do. Got to sell that Game Pass, especially with XCloud coming out. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, definitely check that out. Check out the PlayStation One. See how that goes. Put is put together. I wouldn't expect you know people need. I understand that I wouldn't expect play the PlayStation show to be about some game breaking stuff. I'm sure it's going to be you know up up to date. You know like they're going to stuff that's going on. But, well, know, it I'm did sure say gonna... it did say there were there would be new game announcements. Yeah. So there were you know they're gonna um, you know they're gonna show off I guess stuff that so instead of just doing a monthly you know, uh, overall, cause that's what they've been doing the last couple months is they've done like a monthly video and uh-huh. then throughout the month they go, Oh, and I'm, tr- we're dropping this too. You know, Hey, by the way, yeah. um, you know, not only, you know, not only are you getting, uh, all the, all the games that we had at the beginning of the month, but, uh, you know, we, we'll just drop in, uh, you know, these games or wait, I had actually had a, that was from, um, where was uh, where's my I had it man see see I agree with Jeff I, I like watching inside Xbox shows because they give you they give you some inside oh, information you know when they talk to the developers and stuff so yeah I think it's it's a good show I mean you know yeah 
So these are games that are coming at the end of the month. Um, some mm-hmm. of I think uh, Deus Ex is already yeah. out. I think uh, Edith Finch, which I, or, was that's uh, been out. Yeah, but I've heard great that, that game. is phenomenal. It is a great game, great story. You need to give that a try. I will be. Um, yeah. Marvel vs. Capcom Ultimate. Vampire, which I know you were talking about wanting to play. Yes. So the Vampire or Vampire? I say Vampire, but I, I think you can go either way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, so Siberia and Dirty J just finished their co-op of uh, Halo's, Halo CE. Nice. When you boys get to Halo 3 and you want to do four-player co-op, come find me because I'm I'm down for that once we get to that. So, anyway, um, you know, Game Pass continues to be the best deal on the on, on, on anything right now. Yep. And this is why. So, new show coming up for both Sony and Microsoft. And, uh, good, we're going to start getting more, uh, more information. So, okay. I think we've covered all the little piddly stuff. Although you threw something... You threw something in the Discord. Um, huh. So. Oh, wow. Is this true? Sony announced that full game digital download codes will no longer be available to purchase from retailers. That's what's going around. That that was a memo that was looked like it it got it looked leaked from GameStop employee. This affects all retailers, not just GameStop. So you can't buy codes anymore. Yeah, so you know how something right, if you go online then that's all retailers because if you go online Yeah and you want to buy a digital code instead of a physical Cause that way, then you get an instant. Cause sometimes you get a better deal on these retailers than you do you do on PSN and right. Xbox at, well, and at with, certain times. You with know. GameStop, you can trade in your your physical games. Yeah. Oh my goodness! So and I, I, and I missed the Gamers Club Unlock because they used to have a deal. You know, it's thirty bucks a year, but you got twenty percent off new games. And but I don't know if that. Included digital though, so I don't know. I don't know, but I mean, well, you—I mean, you had a card; you can go just pick it up. Yeah. This is. I mean, I. Uh, yeah, I mean, you lose the ability to to get. You're right to get better deals on stuff. To have a choice. Right. So now you're you're only down to physical. So although I guess what you could do, playing devil's advocate, I guess what you could do is you could just use that to to buy. PlayStation money, right? Yeah. And just spend yeah. the money. Yeah. I mean, it's not. It's not the end of the world, and I and I don't know if we need. I don't know if we want to make it like that. But this is. I mean, listen to this. After April first, retailers full worldwide will no longer sell any full game download codes that may be redeemed on the PlayStation Store. This affects all retailers, not just GameStop. All currently available Sony full digital. SKUs will be deactivated in yeah. the POS and, and on GameStop.com by end of day for one. You can expect to see Sony full game digital SKUs being removed and from the Call of Duty, uh, from the uh, Call of Duty, good lord, from the GameStop <laughs> website over the coming weeks. Wow. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't understand what what they're trying to do here. Especially in a day in an age where we are in the digital age, right? Uh, but I don't know why. I don't know why Sony is doing this. What, what's their? I don't. I don't understand the reasoning. Yeah. Hmm. I don't get either. I, I, you would think that you would want as many. You know. Uh, maybe they just want more engagement on their PSN. Yeah, but you you redeem that code on PSN. Yeah. Just like just like with Microsoft, if you get a code, you mm-hmm. punch it in. Oh my goodness, that is. I, I just don't. I, I don't understand it. Don't understand yeah, I, it. Yeah, I don't get it either. So I'm a digital guy. So 
you know. Now, but, you know. It's, See, and what's, what's funny is that uh, when PUBG came out and Xbox, uh, to make more money, they didn't sell a physical copy, but they, they what they did was put it, uh, you know, remember they sold the, you could buy a physical cardboard with the digital code in, in it at the store. And that, that helped them in a way kind of make money because people could see it. Look, I, I can grab this box and, you know, so that was one way of them trying to get physical sales through, the, but with digital. Yeah, I don't. I, and see, I, I tweeted out to, uh, Xbox or anybody, it's like, okay, we're getting in this digital age, and there's a lot of people who love physical collection. Why can't they make some kind of amiibo type characters or whatever that they could sell and and you know and put the digital code on those? You know, then people, you know, okay, we're not having physical disc anymore. Once you get out of that, you know, once hard drives go away, you know, the, I mean not hard drives, but the disk drives, uh, which we're already seeing that coming soon, you know, one SKU. Uh, it'd be cool to, you know, buy a, a Amiibo, you know, a little character from a game, and then it has the code on it, and you, there you go, here's your collection. But I guess it's not cool. I guess. Alright, so... Yeah. Alright. Um, uh, by the way, um, it's, again, there's so much going on out there. So much news. This also hit this week. Something for us. Let me uh, I'll make it so you can listen to so you can hear. Siberia? update is coming soon and uh, so we have the arena which they've been talking about right mm -hmm. uh, but now a whole new um, a whole new set of adventures too some new stories some new uh, quests um, and fishing which Siberia says he doesn't care about I'll, I'll do some fishing yeah I'll do some fishing that's a beautiful game the, the ocean Another one that's not for any, not for any real reason, not for any, not not because I don't like it, not because, um, I don't know, not because, not because of anything other than time, you know. I I, I need very <laughs> much to you know play Sea of Thieves. I haven't. I haven't played it in ages. Well, we need to have a Sea of Thieves night. And then what the beauty of Sea of Thieves is that you don't have to worry about someone's too high of a level. And you're not going to be able to play with someone if they're too high of a level. They just got right. better, you know. Hey, you got legendary, you got legends like Siberia who got, you know, they got the better gear. So now you can take advantage of that and get on their ship with all that legendary, you know, uh, cosmetics. So. Um, nah, we didn't have a Sea of Thieves night. We need to, we need to plan that. Get Siberia and anybody else. You know, let's get out there. And I wish, uh, I wish they would have like a, where you can invite people to your server. Like that, yeah, you know, yeah. You can only have four people on the ship total, 
but where now you can have other friends with their ships on the same server. I wish I could do that, you know. Open it up that way somehow, but... Well, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, they keep putting... They keep punching content into this thing. Yeah, and... Yeah, that's great. They're supporting the heck out of it. Um, and, you know, some people out there, when it first came out, they're like, well, it doesn't have enough content. But, yeah. I mean, the game... They never sold this game, see these as... You know, it's some grand story, and it's got crafting and all this stuff. No, they said this is an open world sea, sea, you know, on, on the ocean as a pirate where you go out there with your friends and you just have fun. They give you all these tools. And the thing is, when I jumped in it, I wanted to learn the game. I wanted to, tr to explore and, you know, how to be good at, you know, selling the seas and and shooting the cannons and, you know, fighting other people. I mean, that stuff was fun. And we, me and Siberia, you, we've done it a couple times. And, mm. you know, and Crazy One and Nate and HK, and we've had a lot of fun in that game. And we didn't need no story to, you know, guide us along anywhere. So, uh, and, but, you know, and those of us who have been playing it are being rewarded because we're getting you know, fresh content on a regular basis. Well, and there yeah. has to be enough people playing it that, that it's making it worth it for Rare to do that. Yeah, yeah. It's got its following. they got people that love to play it. Siberia plays it. He's already a legendary pirate, and he's still playing it. He plays it with his kids. That's awesome. Yeah, so... And that's no, a it's game a you game. can play with your kids. Yeah, I've seen people on Twitter who, who come out and say that this is a game that they play with their family... You know, sometimes you have family members in other states. They're not around. Right. But that's a game where you can come together, joke around. You know, you're not, you don't have, you're, you're in control of the game. You're not worried about a game trying to give you a story and then you got to sit there and pay attention to the story or whatever. No, you are playing the game together. You make the story. So. You know what it needs now? Now that you said family. It needs split screen. Uh, I don't know. I admit that you know what? I' not sure if that's going to happen because we no, are it's... getting into that that like I was telling you, we're getting in that world where you can play it on the Xbox, but then if your son or child wants to play it, you don't have another Xbox in the house, but you have X Cloud, mm. they can play it on mobile or they can play it on another TV, a smart TV. That's true. All they need is a controller. So I think split screen is kind of going away. It is, but at the same For time... For certain so, but, but a game like this, if we're talking about it being a family game, I think the reason that I could see a split screen working for this is my 10-year-old and I could play it. You know, and, and he could sit next to me. And In the could, same room, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could see it for a game like this, I could see it. Yeah. So. But... Good time as any to get back into it. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So let's uh, let's get to the big elephant in the room. Hmm. The big reason that everybody went, you know, uh, went 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 a little crazy this week. Not in a bad way. Some of you know, not in a bad way. Uh, not crazy like console war crazy, but um, so. As we talked about last week, and as we talked about on Multiverse when we were on last week, the uh, uh, we finally got to see what Google was working on, and we had speculated whether or not Google was going to, to build hardware or whether or not it was going to um, uh, try to just do streaming or whatnot. So all of our questions at have now been answered. Uh, Google Stadia is here. Well, will be here anyway. It will be here in 2019. It will be boxless. And it will run, according to them, on everything. So whether or not, uh, whether or not you are on phone, whether or not you are on a PC, um, whether or not you are on a tablet, 
um, you know whether or not you're on your uh, you're playing on your on your toaster LCD Google Stadia is coming to you so um, right now what we know is that they will run games basically on the Chrome web browser so anything that does Chrome you'll be able to run so um, I'm just gonna try to bounce around some some highlights here um, but uh, you know if you've got a Chromecast if you got an iPhone you might be able to run it if you can run Chrome if you are on a PC you can definitely run Chrome um, if you are on an Android you can definitely run Chrome uh -huh. so um, you know for those people who played uh, Assassin's Creed last year on the on the Google Cloud uh, beta this is pretty much the extension. So Jeff is right. Um, you, you know what? This is, you know you know who we need to get on the show is Jeff, because Jeff is Jeff is smart. Jeff keeps saying that Jeff's like reading my mind and saying things before I get a chance to say them. You're just googling the information. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> no less than what I'm doing. Yeah. No. So he is. No, right. Yeah, definitely would like to no. have Jeff on. Yeah, he is right. The one the the. Uh, the one piece of hardware that they are making is a is the controller, which looks a lot like uh, kind of a hybrid Xbox PS4 controller. So it's kind of, kind of got the roundness of of the Xbox controller, but the um, uh, the finger numbing uh, synchronous uh, stick uh, placement of the PS4 and the DualShock. Um, and so this is, this is interesting too. Not only is, not only is your game going to stream to your phone, but the actual controller is wireless. So it doesn't Bluetooth connect up to your phone. Mm -hmm. It, it basically is a wireless controller. Um, yeah. So, so here's what we know so far. All right, totally cloud-based, so no no console needed. We do we, so we've been over that. Um, we don't know anything about price yet. So, but you know, Phil Harrison, who uh, is heading this up, I know we don't see him right now, but Phil Harrison um, uh, pretty much said that the generation of game, new generation of gaming, is not a box. I don't agree necessarily, but this is what they're going with. This is the push. So, um, and before we go further, you know, what are your thoughts on, on not having a console to be tethered to? Uh, no, it doesn't bother me. I mean, I, I actually think it's, a, it's a kind of a cool, uh, concept, um, you know, kind of easy, it's a, definitely an easy way to just jump in a game, um, uh, no matter where you're at, um. I like the idea that they give you the option to play with any controller, the Bluetooth controller, so you can still play with an Xbox or PlayStation. Um, but um, I, 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 I'm not sure, you know, if I would jump on this. Uh, it all depends on the pricing, and and you know, if they were to get, let's say. Let's say if they were to say, you know, we're we're getting Kotor three exclusive, then I'm gonna play it on this. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm gonna play it. But you know, we'll see. I mean, um, well, and you know, I mean, they are. You know, they're you you now know that they are going to be building uh, games. They they are building yeah. you know, the um, you know they brought Jade Redman in. Yeah, and they didn't bring her in for for nothing. So they did also announce a a first party studio. They are, you know, they're they're uh, what's it called? Stadia. Um, uh, oh, I think it was just St Stadia, Stadia Studio, Entertainment. Right? Yeah, right. Stadia something Entertainment. Like something something like that. Stadia Games and Entertainment. Yeah, Stadia uh, Games and Entertainment. Yeah, they definitely need to bring the. Create some exclusives yeah. that will attract people to this service. Yep. Uh, 
And by the way, Dirty J, I use Bing to search too, but since we're talking about Google Stadia, uh, <laughs> just in case they're listening and want to throw us a, a subscription or two, uh, Google, go Google. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, but sorry. I, I thought it, I I I watched a, a quick uh, fourteen minute uh, highlight of all the stuff that was going to happen, and I thought it was I thought it was cool. Um, they they do look serious, and I wouldn't I, I if I was Xbox, Sony, Nintendo, don't sleep on these guys. No, just like back in the day, people probably didn't they didn't take Microsoft seriously either. No, nope. uh, and look where they're at now, and. Here we are. Google's going to jump in, and they're going. They they are going after uh, the. I don't see them taking. I don't. They are competing with Xbox and Sony, but they're also going after those two billion potential mobile gamers and so on. People who don't, you know, they don't want to spend three, four hundred, five hundred bucks on the on a console or a PC. Right, and so they look at this, and they're like, "I have a smart TV, I have smartphone, I can play these games there uh, with a controller. All I got to do is buy a controller." Right. So it it the the ease of this will attract people um, now. But the one thing, and it, to me, it's always been a number one thing when it comes to uh, getting into gaming for people is price, and that you know, just like the consoles. You know, last gen, PS3, $600. What did people do? They flipped, and they're like, nope, I'm going to go buy a 360. Right. And then when Xbox, you know, this gen, started off $100 more. Prices, to me, is the number one thing people are going to see when they go to a store, you know. Right. So it's going to be interesting to see how how much they're going to charge for this service. And I'm sure Xbox is interested in this because... I'm curious to see what Xbox, what kind of, how they're going to bundle. How, what kind, you know, we talked about this the other day. What kind of service are they going to bundle? Right now, and and this is a good thing. I'm glad that Google's jumping in on the gaming market because what this is going to do is going to help push. It's going to push competition. It's going to push innovation from the, you know, Xbox, and between the, and seeing that Google's getting in on this, and hopefully, we get better pricing too. You know. Like, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what these, you know, it's going to be a while. They, they got a, they got a long ways to go. They're starting off from the ground up, but they have a lot of money, a lot of backing, uh, but they don't have no exclusives. They don't have, uh, they do have the infrastructure as far as like the tools that they're going to be people, you know, they're giving the developers. They, they got YouTube. YouTube is huge. And so, you know, it, it, it's going to be easier for people to go play this game and then stream it directly to YouTube. Because you're already on their, you know, Google Chrome. So, well, it's going to be interesting. It will be. And we talked to, you know, we kind of talked about, we, we talk about this in other people's chats. So, it's it's good for us to, to bring it out here to where our folks can... Uh, Jeff, I swear I was going to say it. <laughs> I asked you if it was okay if I said it out loud. He is he is impatient. We got to get him on the show. We do. He doesn't we have do. to you don't have to put your 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 mug on. You don't have to put your camera on. Yes, he does. You come on our show. He doesn't want to. Well, you know, if we if we can hear him, we can hear him speak, you know, maybe then maybe later on he'll be encouraged to throw a camera on one time. We we'll have, we'll have to get like a, a <laughs> See, we have to figure out how Skype can do like a mouthy thing. And it can, you know, what we need we need something that blurs you out, like you're, uh, like you're, <laughs> like you're, like, it's hiding like his you're identity, on, like right, like you're on cops. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it blurs your face out. <laughs> so hold on a second. So I'm gonna read out, read out. So what Jeff says, what I thought of Google Stadia so far, the tech and being able to continue the game from any platform sounds cool, and with no extra hardware needed except for the, um, except for the controller. Uh, with the controller being the only hardware for Stadia. However, this does add questions and answers. Um, so he's, you know, how much will it cost? How much will the controller cost? And how is that going to work in countries with shitty internet and those with inconsistent infrastructures and speeds? So uh, one of the things he touched on, which um, is one of the things that they announced, is so there, you know, 
every the the platform itself, and there's Phil Harrison. The platform itself is um, is offering 10 teraflops of, of power. You know, custom CPU processing, 16 gigs of RAM for each session, and all that stuff. So basically, what they want to do is is they're promising at some point. Um, with about 25 meg down of uh, 25 to 30 meg down of, of internet service, you can get 4K 60 frame per second with surround sound on your phone. And uh, with 5G coming out, you know, yeah. pro- you but know then how much starts... is how much is 5G going to cost people? Well, that's going to cost a little bit more at the beginning, you but know. you know, it's it it. You know, it's just going to spread around just like 4G has. I mean, yeah. It is. But remember, people are, you know, cell phone companies are pulling away from unlimited data plans. And they're doing, like, shared data and things like that. I see, I see, um, and I said this, where did I, I said this on uh, in the Four Guys with Quarters chat, our buddies over at Four Guys and Quarters, shout out to them. Um, you know, this boon in gaming is going to cause the rest of cell providers who give you unlimited data plans to pull that back. Mm, Maybe, or they're just going to charge you a little bit more. Well, Uh, that's, I mean, that's your, that's your trade off. You're going to have to pay more for it. Cause I'm on T-Mobile and they're, they, you know, they advertise like, Hey, we're all about unlimited. Yeah. I mean, it, until it jams up their bandwidth. Well, I tell you what, if they do that and they start taking, trying to limit me, because I have unlimited internet here at home and on my phone. You start limiting me on that, putting a cap on me, I'm going to switch. And I think a lot of people are feel the same way. And these companies see that too, that being unlimited uh, is attractive. Right. But, of course, unfortunately, like, like Siberia lives out in the country, you're limited to the, you know, to where you can get your stuff from, so uh, definitely stuff like Google is not going. It's not going to be for everybody, uh, especially if you do have, you know, slow internet or you have data caps. You know, that's just some, that's something you're going to have to live with until you know your provider doesn't do that. Yeah. All right, Dirty J. We'll see you later. Appreciate you coming in and supporting us. But yeah, it's going to be interesting. I wonder when are they going to announce, you know, when is this launching? And, you know, I'm sure around, I guess right before that, you know, that's when they're going to announce the price. Yeah. Or launching. Oh, yeah, and later, Dirty J. Sorry, I missed. Yeah. Um, yeah, we we don't know, um, uh, and and we, you know uh, one game that they did uh, that they did announce that is coming uh, is uh, Doom Eternal. So that's the you know that's that's gonna be a big. Yep, yeah, but Bethesda loves to do this stuff. Now we haven't heard if Bethesda is um, doing another. Is doing another press conference this year, mm-hmm. so we don't know if uh, Todd Howard's going to come out and talk about this or not. So, uh, I, I only thing that worries me about getting another company in on the gaming is taking the, you know getting exclusive rights to certain games. Uh, yeah, you know, I said, well, this ain't coming on PlayStation, Xbox, or Nintendo. I'm like. And, but you know, if you really want to play the game, you're like now you're forcing me to go pay for the subscription. And what if the subscription is expensive? So I I hope that they just make deals with the third party developers. You know, hey, you can put it on here too, and not limit to other platforms. So, well, I don't know if Google's. I don't know. I I, mean, I don't know enough about. You know, obviously Phil Harrison is a is an industry veteran, and he knows that he knows mm-hmm. that game on both. You know, he knows he's got trade secrets. He's got he's got dirt on Sony and Microsoft. Let's be honest. Yeah. yeah. You know, he's he's been on both, so you know he kind of knows. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, now I will, you know, the, the, the neat thing about that controller, I was thinking about this earlier in one way, I'm interested to see the lag between the controller and the game because you're not actually Bluetoothing to the controller. So what if your game, what if your game streams lagging behind your controller, behind your controller? Mm. So that's something that, that, you know, they're going to need to work out and prove. But imagine this, you, you're playing on your phone, you pause the game, you take your controller, you go upstairs to your PC, you fire up your PC, you get the game going again on, on your Chrome browser, and with the same controller, you're right back in it. Yeah. And, you know, I don't have Bluetooth on my upstairs PC, so um, I can still play. I mean, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool, which means you're no longer tethered to – you are no longer tethered to your console. I can't, you know um, – there are still some limitations that I have to playing my Xbox, not in front of my Xbox. Yeah. So that does eliminate that here. And if but I, I think Xbox is going to address that. With X Cloud, agreed, agreed. So you know we don't know yet, but yes, mm-hmm. I'm I'm thinking that as well. Um, uh, you know, they also want so they want, and Phil Harrison did say during this, um, uh, and I'm just going to try to find it. Um, he is. They are fully. So this may not be this may not be too bad. Um, they are completely open to cross-platform play. So, and that's game saves and progression. Mm-hmm. Um, so it does sound like um, you know even if it's a game that you have on the Xbox, if you if you also have it if it's if it's one of those where you can also bring it across like a Fortnite. Or something like that. You could bring your your progression across that kind of thing. I uh, they're all for that. So, um, and then the rest is uh, what we what we know and what we see here. You know, they're talking right now about the uh, the back end and and how powerful the back end in is. Blah 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 blah. Um, you know, we will we will see if. Yeah. 4K 60 with HDR is really is really capable here. I mean, it may be capable being on this like a closed, you know, uh, cloud service, you know. But that still that still comes down to the developer, right? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, well, I guess what they're, I, and this is where. This is where I am not sure um, how they're scaling this. I guess this is, I guess they're taking the PC version of the game and running it, you know, optimizing it for the, the power of, of Google. Because really the back end of this stuff still has to run. <coughs> and those boxes are what's going to mm-hmm. ultimately power the game while it just kind of feeds you the video stream. Yeah. So, um, I'm trying to look to see. So yeah, there's they're showing Doom Eternal. Yeah, I'll let you explain the the technical side of that, how all that works. Well, but so you can kind of see it here. So they're yeah. they're doing single GPU versus multi GPU. So the 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 way that this works. Um, but being an IT guy, I, I understand it. Um, when you, if you ever, if you ever use something like remote desktop, if you're in business and you, if you're, if you're a business that uses, say, a terminal server, anybody who knows what a terminal server is, it's where somebody will remote desktop to uh, a server. Somewhere mm-hmm. else, whether it's co-located somewhere in the cloud, in Microsoft Azure, so on and so on. When you get onto that machine, that terminal server, you sign into it, you get your own desktop, and you can run applications or you can you can do things in it. 
all that's happening is a screen is getting redrawn back to your computer, redrawn from the terminal server back to your machine via the remote desktop connection app. All the processing and everything you do when you open up Outlook or you open up Word or you go look at a file or you go play, you know, you launch Internet Explorer or whatnot, it's all being done on that server and shooting it back to you via a screen image. Yeah. So that's why I understand what Google's doing. The question is, is can they pull off the performance? That's my only question is can they pull the performance off? Because what they're doing is basically a, a they're basically redrawing this, they're streaming the video back to you. All the game processing is being done at Google's platform. All the all the the rendering, all the AI, all the you know, like like as if you were as if basically the, the PC you were playing it on is in Google's uh, server farm. What it's doing is it's streaming the video playback to your device. And then the controller is basically wirelessly going to the server farm and, and interacting with the server. So everything yeah. comes back to bringing that video stream back to your device. That's, that's, the, that's where I think the the proof will be in the pudding. Now, again, we know people who have played Assassin's Creed Odyssey in their beta and apparently worked well. So, we're, you know, will this how this will scale up is going to be the question. So, um, I am assuming we're going to get more in the summer, so yeah, it's either going to be at E3 or they'll show some more at Gamescom because this is going to launch in the UK. So that would be interesting if it was at e, if it is at E3, and that's where they reveal the pricing and all that. Because mm. there 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 is a spot there is a space there at E3 <laughs> if they wanted to come in. There's room there now. Yes, there is. So. No. Oh. Oh. Oh, what is this? Oh, they're, okay. I don't know what they're, style transfer ML. So anyway, so, uh, you know, the. Uh, it, it is hard to, you know, you want to get hype, uh, and it looks good. Mm-hmm. And we just need to get some of these questions answered. Yeah, and like you know, like I said, this is a GDC. It's just more about the technical side of, you know. So you know, they're not going to get in on the pricing and no, they're not. the games and blah blah blah. And, you know, that's that's the E3. That's going to be E3. So, yeah. So if they do that E3, that'd be interesting. Yeah. See how that plays out. Ah, parental controls. That's good. Yeah. So so that's that's what we know. That's all we know on on Google Stadia. Um, you know, they got to get they got to get. They have to, they have to get, and I'm going to say this for xCloud, Project xCloud 2, xCloud 2, they do have to convince people of the lag, they've got to convince people the latency is not there, they have to convince people that, um, you know, it's worth, it's worth the price to stream it. Um, You know, Microsoft has said very, very straightforward that Project xCloud is not a replacement for the Xbox. They said it multiple times. It's not a replacement for their hardware. They still believe that a, uh, and this is where the two, this is this is your competing vision right now. Microsoft says that, you know, the streaming is going to be great, but it's not going to replace an Xbox. Your, your best performance, your best experience is still going to be a, a piece of hardware in your house, 4K, you know, possibly 4K 60 with the next, uh, line of of, uh, of system refresh, and Google is saying we do not believe that. We believe that you can stream with the same quality as an Xbox One or a PS4 Pro, um, and we could do it better. So there's your competing visions. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we know Xbox is 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 getting in on this competition with Google. Mm-hmm. 
uh, with their X Cloud. So they they had a little deal there at the GDC. Uh, you know, not a lot of that stuff we already saw. A lot of the tools that they're bringing out, uh, making it easier for developers. You know, where they can, you know, be able to have their games on mobile and you know, and have those controls and all that such. You know, just make it easier for them. So, this is going to be interesting. We are definitely moving in a new age of gaming, uh, and it's at the beginning. So, and like you said, the Xbox is not doing away with the console. You still can't, the consoles have a market in gaming, but so does mobile. So does PC, and Xbox is in the business of bringing games making money and so they have games on consoles they have games on pc that's why they you're seeing halo master chief collection go to steam mm -hmm. you know it's business it's money yep and there's a lot of hype for i have a friend at work we talked about this last week he wants to play halo now he's a pc gamer so and now xbox is getting into the mobile vid gaming world market there are gamers who only they're gamers on mobile only. We don't understand that because that's, but it, you know, you have generations of kids now who have grown up on glass phone, you know, touchscreen. That's, you know, they're used to that. We grew up with controllers in our hand, you know, traditional controllers to what we see now. But now we have generations of people who, they're touchscreen, you know, gamers. So it's just another market in the gaming world. So you have, you know, you have an option. You want to play on your console. You want to play in smart TV. You want to play on your PC. You want to play on your mobile. Or yep. So it's just a, just an option. It's not, you know, your choice of gaming how you want to game is not going away. Right. By the way, um, something on the controller. Uh, so they're getting in on the uh, they're getting in on the specialized button for the controller. This is kind of cool. With yeah. a, with a button on the controller, you can upload your gameplay to YouTube. Not not that that was a big surprise. Yeah. No, no. And that's the thing. They you know they they have the the biggest uh, video streaming you know st service out there. You know, the YouTube is bigger than Twitch. It's bigger than the uh, Mixer. Right. So, um. now, um, you know, let's let's switch over because there is, and and, and I know that um, you know I know that I know that in talking, you know, Microsoft has not put out as much information. Um, about Project X Cloud just yet. Uh, they they did talk about it a little bit at GDC, but they haven't they haven't done a, a they, they they didn't do this level of of breakdown on it yet. And I think we're going to get that breakdown. Um, I think we're going to get that breakdown at E3. Mm -hmm. But. There is something else that Microsoft is um, is is doing, and all right. So the presentation is over. The future has no box. <laughs> um, you know, so we talked about GameStack, and that's really one of the things they're doing. But um, one of the other things that they are doing, which I found a picture of, so. Microsoft also believes that you don't need a controller at all. Now, I don't agree. I told you this earlier. I can't really play like this. So, but I know many people to do. I yeah. know a ton of people to do. So, Microsoft is, uh, they, they are putting the ability for without any special real changes to their, to their system, uh, to game development to be able to put the entire Xbox controller up on on the mobile screen um, so on a touch so 
Um, they believe that if you can make a game for uh, for the Xbox, then you can you can make it very simply um, touch compatible. So, you know, I um, I found. Like somebody had uh, posted a picture of Cuphead, right? With the entire, with this entire um, layout on the screen. Yeah, an example of how, you know, how the developer can come up with the controls that'll make it a little bit, you know, make more sense for the game. Right. So, um, you know the the which is which is cool because you need to have those options on the mobile phone because not everybody you know I've seen on Twitter not everybody's gonna have a freaking controller with an adapter to hook up to their phone and walk around like that you know or have right. it anywhere right or know. carry that wireless controller yeah it just it, it's kind of weird and awkward you know unless you're at home just kind of chilling. Uh, whatever, but uh, you know, I, there there are certain games that I can you know see playing on mobile with just a touch screen, right? You know, and I'll, I'll try it out when it, when that happens, and you know if I like it. I did see a slider like a wheel slider for Forza. Yeah. So, um, now here's what they're saying about so so what they're saying about X Cloud. I'm going to bring the game stack back up. Because uh, that's really the closest thing I've got. Um, I didn't want to. I didn't want to steal anybody's images that uh, that you know. I wish I. I was trying to find a uh, a clean version of the um, of the, uh, the the slides they had in their presentation. But you know, um, the, people have to remember too. Microsoft has Azure. You know, their their mm -hmm. their infrastructure is not 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 half shabby. So, um, you know, Microsoft said if you can make it, if you've made Xbox games, you can make them work for X with X Cloud with minimal effort without having to break open any code. Yeah. So just using some of this game, some of the stuff in Game Stack here, you can fine tune your game for phones or other devices um, if you want, and then have those games playable on an array of devices. So, you know, it's funny too. Like you see Havoc there, right? Mm-hmm. Google showed Havoc on their screen too. Yep. And uh, Xbox owns that. Yep. So Xbox is making some money. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, because, I mean, that's big on for gamers. Havoc. Yep. So, um, you know, it's it's basically, you know, I, I wish we knew more. Um, I do know that, that, you know, Microsoft was offering the same thing. You know, they have a. Uh, a, a backbone of servers that can that can process this stuff and it just streams the game to you. We also don't know price. We also don't know mm -hmm. games. You know, we also don't know, you know, if this is something that, you know, it, it, I, I'm curious, will this work, you know, will they allow this to work with any game you own? You know, that's the key. Yeah, that's going to be the key for me, because if I have to pay, like I, I don't mind paying for Xbox Live and Game Pass, and and like a lot of us, we use our reward points or you know we wait for those sales. So I've never paid full price for those. Right. Uh, but I think it'd be a mistake if Xbox charges a another price for a third service for X Cloud. You know, saying, well, if you want to play on xCloud and everywhere, you know, here's uh, 10 bucks a month or whatever. I don't, you know, I don't want to have to pay another subscription fee. I, I, I want to see them add this in. If you're an Xbox Live uh, subscriber, gold, you know, you get to use, you, you know, xCloud. Uh, or if you're a Game Pass, you know, maybe they'll have a deal where if you subscribe to Game Pass... That's where I X, X Cloud will be available for you uh, anywhere. 
I, I just can't see them charging a, a, a third subscription price. I, I can't either. Their service, yeah, no, for this. I, I can't either. And that's what I was bringing up to you in the Four Guys Recorders. You know, it's like, I, I can't see that. Uh, that'd be a mistake, and they have to compete with Google. Um, well, and I think if anybody's got the money to, to, to do it, it's them. Now, yeah. I put, a, I put a, a question into their chat. Um, you know, would you pay 100 bucks a year for a combined Xbox Live, Game Pass, xCloud um, service? I would. I mean, in a way, we're already we're paying a little bit more than that. If you you know you add up Game Pass and Xbox Live, that's more than that. Yeah, and I think if they bundled it together, yeah, and, and gave it to you all at, all together, um, I, I I think that's how I I agree with you. They can't charge another they can't charge another fee. And I'll be honest with you, I don't I don't play in other places enough for that. I don't yeah. have unlimited data, so I I have to have I have to have Wi Fi to make this work. And really the only the only way that, that the only place that I would be able to stream stuff is if I went on vacation with the family mm -hmm. and didn't take my Xbox with me because I I never do that anymore anyway. Yeah. Um, and then I, you know I could I could sit there and, and low key stream you know, on my phone through the hotel Wi-Fi, uh, while the you know, while I'm out on the you know veranda or what have you. So I mean, I that's I don't I don't know I'm, I'm I don't have time to to play while I'm at work. I don't have time to. I just don't have time to play like mm -hmm. everywhere. So I'm oddly enough, like like Google has no real interest for me because no. of that and. I'm not at a, at a separate at a separate rate. So, all right, see you, Jeff. Uh, we're almost done anyway. Later, Jeff. Jeff Appreciate hang it, out brother. For a couple minutes, we're almost done. Okay. Uh, <laughs> real quick question. Uh, speaking of play anywhere, or can you play the games you already own? Uh, EA, you know, they have EA access, and you have Origins on PC, right? Right. If you own the game. Can you play it on? Are you? Does that give you access to play it on console and PC? Or is that different? Like if you play anywhere is X is is PC and, and Xbox. Yeah, but what I'm saying is like as far as EA. No. Uh, no, they're separate. There, there's their games. Are Origin is, is a PC service, right? Yeah. Subscription. Okay. Yeah, it's totally different. You have to pay separately for it. There's no, there yeah, is so no cross. Yeah, I, I. If you already own it on console, but then if to, you want to play it on PC, it. yeah, you yep. have to, you have to have or both. Subscribe. You have to have both subscriptions. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's, and see, that's why I don't own them both. Yeah. So I think that's a mistake. But you know what? That's that. To me, that's different too, because the the console market and the PC market are segmented that way. Um, there, there isn't, and never has really been a big, a big crossover. The, the whole, you know, remember that whole, you know, Microsoft games are coming out on PC. Why do I need to own an Xbox kind of thing? That yeah. crossover, that layer of crossover, is just not there. Yeah, it's not no. there, and in, in, it, it, it just not, in, not in numbers. Yeah. So, um, I, I the. There are many questions to to ask about xCloud, and some of that does stem around. that. One of the other reasons I think they need to bundle it with something like Game Pass mm -hmm. is how do you... How do you do gaming licensing through that? Like, obviously with... Obviously with Google... We don't know with Google either. We don't no. know if you buy the service but still have to buy the game... And have to own the game or not, you know, or if or if that whatever monthly fee gives you access to all the games on. See, that's yeah. That, that, there's there's something there's something missing from um, from both of these guys that needs to be answered. I mean, well, Xbox too. has the advantage where they already have content; they already have exclusives. 
they have a service called Game Pass that has tons of games on it, and that would be real attractive to mobile gamers, you know, if they, you know, want to say, hey, for 10, 15 bucks a month, you know, you can subscribe to Game Pass, and here you go. Or if you want to buy a game, you know, I don't know. I know Game Pass is going to PC. So obviously, you know, if you're on PC, you're going to have to pay a subscription service for that. Yeah. So, um, I know it's it's going to be interesting to see how Microsoft charges for this on the mobile. I'm curious because people on mobile, uh, PC don't pay Xbox Live. Uh, but they don't have but they don't get all the benefits as Xbox Live Gold. So basically, Xbox Live on PC is just silver, right? In a way. You know, they do get right. party chat, but... Um, so I, I can't imagine Xbox charging Xbox Live on mobile either. I don't know. They have a lot... <laughs> they have a lot of questions to answer. Yep. That That's a big one now. Now that I'm thinking of it... That's a big one for me. Is mm-hmm. is exactly what games will be streamed through XCloud? And yeah. something that that I can't remember if we were listening to our friends over the Iron Lords, or if, I think it was because I think I think one of them it was either um, King or Addict asked this: What if a what if a what if a, a, a developer doesn't want their game streamed through that service? Now, oh, I don't yeah, understand. That, I don't that understand. was Clowns. Oh, it was Clowns, right. I don't yeah. understand. No, I don't... no, no, it wasn't Clowns. I'm sorry. It was, no, uh, it was, I thought it was, like... guess. It was not Four Guys Recorders. It was, was it? Uh, okay. Uh, Predator. Predator, was okay. Yeah. I, I thought it was, I'm sorry, I thought it was, uh, yeah. I thought it was, was Iron Lords, but I, but you, you're probably right. Um, I, I, you know, there's, there's, there are serious questions that have to be, that have to be answered here about, about what what games you are going to be able to play because if it's if it's if it's not every game you own mm-hmm. I don't know how either you know obviously with with Google it's yeah I don't know I, it can't be no, that is a good question because obviously play anywhere has kind of gone away because these developers want to make money if you want to play on a console you got to buy it for console Right. You want to play on PC, you got to buy it for PC. So now we're getting into the gaming market, uh, into this world with these companies. That's going to be another thing too. So, uh, but I, I, the but the thing is, but the thing is, with those third-party developers, they can they can make their games and sell it on PC and console, right? But are they? Gonna make game? Are they gonna make these games available where you can buy them on, on mobile also, separately? I mean, for them to do that, if the only way people are gonna be able to pay play these games, they're gonna have to do it through services like, you know, the Stadia and, and XCloud. So if they want to make money, do microtransactions or whatever, uh, it, they will make more money if they allow their games to be played on mobile too. Sure. So, I, yeah, that'd be interesting to see how that works. But that is a, I mean, that I, that all of a sudden becomes my forefront question. Yeah. I mean, you know, and that's why I think that if they if they bundle if they don't if they I think I think bundling it with Game Pass gives you that answer. Yeah. You know, obviously it's going to be, you know, anything in Game Pass is going to let you do it. But then, you know. What about the games that aren't? And I and and I don't know what the answer is. And boy, I I tell you, that's a that's, that's a where the, that's that's gonna come down to Xbox having to make deals with these third party developers. No, well, like what, say look, we want we we'll give you a little bit bigger percentage. But we want gamers who subscribe to our services to be able to play these games wherever they want. And that is what they pre- that's what they're telling people 
we want you to be able to play your games wherever you want to play. But if you're limited to certain games because the developer doesn't want their games on mobile because they're not making uh, money off of it or whatever. So there's got to be something to sweeten the deal. Yeah. Hey, what's up, irrelevant native? Hey, native. Frauds. You're the fraud. Sir. You're the fraud. You got to <laughs> hear a little saying, late. Man, we started at nine thirty. Where the hell only, were you? Only frauds jump in at late at, in the right, end of the when show. We're about to right at the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, all right. I I am looking at um. I am looking at a feed. From uh, uh, Android Central, Windows Central. Uh, Russell Holly. So while he was watching the um, what Microsoft was talking about, um, no need for a streaming version of the game. Cloud-aware tools can be detected and activated if you run if you're in an xCloud space instead of your xCloud at home. Content test app for devs coming soon with network sim tools to optimize for different environments. Well, huh. latency measurement tools are available. See, and latency is going to be the other thing. Is they, they both of them are going to have to deal with with uh, latency. Oh, it's nine o'clock over on the west coast. Well, you know what? We can't start at midnight just for you, native. <laughs> I'm glad you could join us for a couple minutes, though, brother. Seriously. Um, I, yeah, but did, so now, see, now now that we've talked this through, man, my I've. I'm really stuck on this. How on on this? You know what? What games are you going to be able to play on it? You know, are you going to be able to play every game you physically own? So, my wife would agree with you. Irrelevant. She says there's sharks mm-hmm. in there. Hey, I grew up in the beach. I swam up there with sharks. They never bit me. I well, I never did that. I I swam with jellyfish. So I've got stung with jellyfish many times. Yeah, my grand my grandparents <laughs> in Woodmont, Connecticut, which is um, a little a little retirement community. Well, now it's all condos since you know long they've long since passed away, but they lived in a little re- like a little summer community, and I could walk across the the street and get to the beach. It was awesome. We spent summers. I spent every summer there. Mm. And of course, uh, you know you missed it, but Greg Johnson, when he was on our show a couple weeks ago from Maui, was trying to get us to, to check out. <laughs> a, you know, he's trying to get a whale to jump out of the ocean for us. So, um, so I there, again, we have we have two different competing, um, you know, visions here. So you know, I, I just I the, these are questions that have got to be spanned out. I, I will say that. Um, Microsoft's desire to do a touch, as long as you can still do their original plan where you could, you know, potentially plug a controller into your mm-hmm. phone, you know, choice is always good. Choice will always be good. Yeah. I will always, I will always champion choice no matter what. Um, you know, I, I... Now, one thing, too, as far as, the, you know, as far as Xbox exclusives... You know, definitely those you should be able to play anywhere. You uh, would think. Um, yeah. But as far as through xCloud, so, you know, not, you know, play anywhere, you know, and then you get two versions, you know, like a PC, like the way they were doing that before. But. Well, and that's what they're saying here is according to, according to what Microsoft said at GDC, mm-hmm. there isn't going to be a streaming version of the game. It's just it's gonna know. X Cloud's gonna know when you're not on your Xbox. Yeah. Yeah. So no matter what, you you you're paying for a subscription service, and it, whether you're playing on console, mobile, or you know, it's gonna allow you to play there. Now I'm curious if it's gonna be like that on smart TVs. Ooh. I don't know. If they're gonna have an app on the smart TV. I don't know. I mean, I could see them working with someone like Samsung. Yeah, they have a part. They've worked with them before. Yeah. So. 
So I guess the next setup is is the, the next time we're going to see anything is going to be E3. This is this is where I because mm-hmm. if they're going to if they're going to roll this out in at least beta format, they've got to do it before the end of the year and so E3 is where we're going to find out. Yep. No. Yep, we we are all in the we are in the uh, streaming video game streaming age right now. So you know, a couple of years ago it was all about that VR. Mm-hmm. We and you know, remember how like last gen? It's all about those motion controllers. Motion, right. Uh, uh, you know, and then you had the the connect and the the what's it PS to I whatever PS I and the right, PS and then, then we got VR. So now we're into streaming. So and we're gonna see a lot of that. Yeah. Oh, hold on! There was an internal memo. So uh, I don't know how much of this is. So apparently, Phil Spencer sent out a memo to uh, to his team. Uh, where he said, "Today we saw a big tech competitor enter the gaming market." and frame the necessary ingredients for success as content, community, and cloud. There were no big surprises in their announcement, although I was impressed by their leveraging of YouTube, the use of Google Assistant, a new Wi-Fi controller. Um, Google went big today, and we have a couple of months until E3 when we go big. So that's con- that's that's what Phil Spencer said in, you know, uh-huh. to a, in an internal email to his team. So... We have to stay agile and continue to build with our customer at the center. We have the content community cloud team and strategy, and I've been saying for a while it's all about execution. This is even more too true today. So here we go. E3 is going to be where they're where they're going to talk about it, and hopefully they're going to answer that question. I think Google's got to answer that question too. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they're going to be in the same. Uh, well, I mean. Yeah, yeah, because if Google they make third party deals where they get third party games on their deal, and yet with their service you can play on a, a browser on your phone or whatever you can play the games. Why would these third party developers give Xbox crap about that? I don't know. So no. Now, what does Sony do? <clears throat> Sony has some of this in place with PlayStation yeah. Now, mm-hmm. but they don't have the PS4 library. Yeah, they. they I, I, yeah. yeah, I don't know. But they've been still been successful without you know doing that, putting their they games have. in the PS Now day and date. So they have. They're not relying on that uh, subscription to PS Now. You know, Xbox. They, they you know, they both kind of doing things their their own way. What works for them, you know, for reasons, certain reasons. But uh, you know, I'm definitely Sony's going to have to uh, build up and make improvements to PS Now to to where they can bring it out to stream. On multiple devices, but they don't have the, you know, well, they they, they just don't have the the the, the software uh, tools and engineering and know how as much as Google and Xbox does. No, they don't. So, um, and I'm not sure they have the backbone, uh, the back end. You know, they, I mean, they, they work with Rackspace. That's their backbone mm-hmm. for um, for gay, you know, for gay key and uh, and all the things that they have. You know, they have invested in in some of the technology, but I'm not sure that that they had. They don't have. They don't have a Microsoft Azure. No. They don't have you know uh, an Amazon Web Services. They don't have the the, the infrastructure to match. Um, they've got to do something though because they've been awfully quiet on this. They've been awfully quiet on this, and now, you know, they're they're going to be awfully quiet around E3 while Google and, and Microsoft are kind of duking it out in this space. Um, 
it's got to be it's got to be concerning to to somebody in, in Sony. Well, I'm sure somebody's got to be going. Hey guys, you know we're usually the ones that are that are trying to to innovate to market here. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have to look at this because as the years goes by. The, the, you're going to start having the majority of gamers are going to prefer to play their games anywhere. Right. You know, on a mobile and such. Consoles, you know, eventually consoles, consoles and PC are not as, you know, it's going to be, it's, you know, over the years it's going to become less and less as a market and the gaming. So they have to get in on that. On that. They want to keep doing what they're doing. Yeah. So and Nintendo, Nintendo, kind of on their own world. I think they can survive. You know, people love. You know, the Switch was a great thing, attracted a lot of people. Uh, people love their Nintendo. They got a huge following. They can sell those exclusives. So, and we keep seeing them on the NPDs, on a regular basis. You know, we just seen Mario Kart Eight. Is on there, you know. Sometimes and then they fall off and then they come back. So, yeah, Nintendo they're gonna be last to this unless they're working. Unless they're kind of they're working with the Xbox, kind of help with this. So I don't know. Well, I th- this is why when we talked about it at the beginning of the show and we talked about Cuphead. Mm-hmm. And how, you know, how Studio MDHR thanked them that there has to be something bigger going on. And maybe it revolves because, you know, my, Nintendo's been awfully quiet about this too. Now, yeah, yeah. They got their own stuff going on. You know, they, you know, Reggie's rolling out and, and you know, Bowser's coming in. So mm-hmm. I, I'm not, I, I get. I get that they have some other other priorities right now, but and you know you look at you look at every month's MPD numbers and and just about every major Switch title is on there, save Splatoon two. So it's not like it's not like Nintendo is not doing well themselves. I think I just I'm I'm with you almost a hundred percent that that something. I'm telling you, man, it, it, Reggie and Phil are coming out arm in arm uh, on on stage. Well, remember the uh, Xbox hired uh, the one guy that used to work for uh, Nintendo. Yes, they did. So there's definitely a relationship and an understanding between them two. Um, that's gonna be interesting. Maybe Game Pass has has you know maybe we might get some uh, Nintendo exclusives on Game Pass at some point, or maybe published games that were from Nintendo. On Game Pass, you know, maybe not the big the big guys, but <coughs> let's say let's say uh, uh, Marvel Alliance is it Marvel Alliance? Yes. Uh, okay, you know, Marvel Alliance Three is exclusive on a Switch. Who's to say that that you know? Okay, it's going to come out on on the Switch, and then after so many months, here it comes out on Game Pass. So we can see stuff like that, you know. Okay. Maybe they're they're looking at that like hey. We're going to give you Cuphead, you know, and then later on, here comes a game that published by Nintendo. So it's I, it's just something. Something's in the air. Yeah, I don't know what it is yet, but something's in the air. You no, know, the next couple of months, man. I mean, we're already we're already almost to April, mm-hmm. and it's going to be a it's going to be a that 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 wait is going to feel like forever. To get to E3, couple months, yeah. I cannot wait. You know, obviously, like we've done the last couple of years, we're ready to we're ready to live stream it. We will do our live reaction show. We'll see if uh, you know what would be great is if we can do this year. If if the entire crew, the NLG and WDFC um, crew, did that live stream, yeah, that'd be fun. I want I want Daz. I want Siberia. I know you're listening, to Siberia. You're gonna come on this show once. I want Siberia. I want Daz. I want Witty. I want uh, Coop. I want I want a big ass show for that because mm-hmm. I mean it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be huge. 
Yeah. And and God, man, I went back and and watched our live streams of last year's um, uh, PlayStation and and Microsoft shows, and I remember the show we did with Tick, mm-hmm. the the super show we did with them, and I just remember some of the reactions to. Um, you know, to them buying the studios and stuff, and I just, yeah, they're 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 coming out, they're coming out full bore, so, um, I just, mm, it's gonna be a long, it's gonna be a long wait, man. Yep, it's gonna be a long <laughs> wait. So, all right, well, look, man, even Siberia is ready to go to sleep. So, <laughs> yeah. all right, it is twelve fifteen. Hey, we, we had a lot. We had and a lot. We of started on time. Yeah, we did. We, we had a lot of stuff to talk about. We, we kind did. of sidetracked a little bit. We did. But, no, we did good. We did good. This was a good show. And uh, we missed you, Peter. Hopefully you yep. are. I hope that you are actually enjoying yourself on your on your cruise. Yes. Um, I hope that, uh, you know, uh, you make it back safe, of course. And uh, your spot, you know, in the middle of the in the middle of the screen. So we're looking. Come back with the that. tan. Yeah, that I got to see. <laughs> I got to see him with a tan. So, uh, so anyway, um, I think we did. I'm looking through our, I'm looking through our Discord, and I think we covered every single thing. Yeah, that's good. So, um, now I'm gonna go and a lot of interesting topics. Uh, mm. No drama. No. You know, hey, we we love gaming. We, we love just gaming, but we, but it's cool to talk about the. Some of the latest and greatest stuff, like you know, without having to, you know, bring console wars and drama. So I will always, I will always love it. And look, because we're know, adults here. Yes, exactly. You know, and tonight, you know, Coop was out. You know, we we mm-hmm. did have some regulars that popped in and popped out. It was a, a light night for us in the chat, as you can see. But you know what? It's okay. I'll still take, I'll still take the folks that come in, and. Um, talk games and have a good time and um and enjoy you know hopefully we make them part of the show um i'm i'm always i'm always okay with that so. yeah yeah no it was good chat was good yep. definitely appreciate everybody uh jumped in chat so very dirty j stinking corpse native project jeff you know jago yep you know, definitely, you know, love all you guys, Gaming Brothers. So, appreciate it. Indeed. And don't forget to check out our uh, our affiliates, our fellow affiliates. You know, we, we mentioned four guys with quarters. These guys are fantastic. Um, they, had a great, they, had a, uh, they had a great show last week. I actually was able mm-hmm. to catch live this past yeah. week. Um, love those guys. Uh, our friends over at Multiverse, you know, we did our two-part crossover event with them where they were on our show last Friday. And we we uh, invaded their show on Monday and had a really good time with them. Uh, gaming perspective, you know, we had uh, we had Nick and we had Sam, uh, mm-hmm. one of my favorite uh, writers over at Tick. We had you know um, they're on they're on. Let's see, Four Guys with Quarters is on Thursdays. Yes, Thursdays, Thursdays at five. Uh, yep, five thirty. Five thirty. Yep. And then um, uh, Multiverses is, is on Monday night. They're the best show on Monday night. They say. Uh, eight o'clock. They were the best show when we were on. That's for sure. That's right. And uh, uh, gaming perspective comes on tomorrow night. Although I think he had mentioned they might be moving nights, but I'm not one hundred for sure on that. But they'll be mm-hmm. on tomorrow. Um, and then us on Friday nights, holding it down. Yes, sir. So um, thank you guys so much. And uh, Chris, another one down. We still haven't gone three hours. <laughs> Hold on, we nope. and we, and we, no, 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 we're, no, we're, no we're doing, cause you we're know, doing what, have to be three. Yeah, that's E3 right. E3 might be three hours. E three might be three hours, but that's yeah. that's different. Yeah. So, good night, everybody. Have a great week. Uh, tomorrow night we will be uh, hopefully streaming some uh, Division two. So check us out for that. Yep. And uh, good night, gamers. Play on. Yep. Good night, gamers.